Welcome back to the ABCs of RPGs, where we teach you the basics of tabletop role-playing games. My name is Spencer Reese. I'm going to be your game master for today. And I normally don't talk like this, but I'm trying to be cyberpunk, and I I, I think it's coming off. Um, you may notice I, I dyed my hair today, too, more of a yellow. That's not going to be every session. I, I did that for a costume today at Dragon Con, but <laughs> last week, that was on purpose. That red was on purpose. Um, anyways, welcome. ABCs of RPGs, we're covering Cyberpunk Red, um, the newest version of Cyberpunk. Uh, and, of course, I'm Spencer. I am joined by my players, Dalton. Hello, I'm Dalton. I'm I'm super Cyberpunk. I'm the most Cyberpunk person here. Uh, yes. It's probably, it's probably true. Probably not true. I don't know. <laughs> Are we introducing our characters? Yeah, did you want us to introduce our characters? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yes, yes, yes. Introduce your characters. Who? What are you playing? What are you playing? All right. I want you to take a deep breath. Okay. Now tell me the truth. Do you want me to introduce my character or not? Yes. Okay. All right. Character time. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be playing a a character called you with uh, they them pronouns. Uh, they are a internet streamer. Um, our, our current vernacular would be a VTuber. They, like, have their own little, like, avatar. Um, in real life, they, they are very, like, kind of sweatpants, don't care, kind of a neat. Um, I don't know if you wanted us to do the life path yet, so I'll probably skip that, but... Not yet. Okay. Yeah. A uh, little... My most prized possession of my character is their, their copy, uh, their volume one copy of Dragon Ball. They love manga from the 1980s. Um, and they think that 1980s was peak, was peak culture. It was the best time. That's awesome. Amazing. Um, next up, I think we have Dan. Oh, oh, my turn? Okay. Um, so, yeah. First of all, hey guys, I'm Dan. Uh, sorry I do not have my camera on today. Um, I typically would, but it's broken. So I need to go buy a new one this week. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, so I am playing... <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, I am playing a character named Skull. Um, and despite his uh, dark-sounding name, it's really just kind of like a joke that he... Like, he named himself that. Just like as a joke, right? Um, he is like this big. Uh, he's a so he's a solo um, kind of a shooty guy, super kind of evil. Just has no problem killing anybody and everyone. Um, if you see the uh, like the image or the figurine I made of him, he he quite enjoys um, you know combat, uh, murder, all the fun things. So um, I'm excited to play as him because it's just going to be a lot of uh you know a lot of running around shooting stuff running and gunning so that's fun uh but next up we have ashley uh my name is ashley i use she her pronouns i am actually pretty pumped for cyberpunk i the more i've i've learned about it and created my character and stuff i'm, I'm getting pretty pumped for it um, I'm playing a character named Alaska Bones. Um, she uses she, they yeah. pronouns. Um, her handle is Doc Ice, so that's what she goes by on the street, and she is a med tech. Um, Doc Ice because she specializes in a lot of cryogenic operating systems. Um, so basically, if you go down on the streets, she is going to... Stick you in ice so that you can heal quicker. Um, and yeah, she's uh, her her most valued possession since since Dalton mentioned his is just her um, assault rifle because she doesn't trust anyone or um, have really like worldly possessions. She uh, is just very fond of her assault rifle because it's the only thing that she trusts and. Uh, never jammed on her, so we'll see how long that lasts. I forgot yeah. to mention mine. My my most skull's most valued possession is a letter from his parents. His his parents from when he was in a Yeah, 
It's a it's a treasured letter. Goku That's doesn't hot. care about oh. his parents. <laughs> Um, he cares and... about Grandpa Gohan. That's not his. That's his, <laughs> grand, that's his adoptive grandfather, not his like biological parents. <laughs> we all know that Piccolo is the real dad, all right? <laughs> Piccolo is Gohan's real dad. That's all we care about. Do you think Super all still happened about. in Cyberpunk World? <laughs> no. That's a good question. Like Z, maybe, but <laughs> I don't know about Super. No, I think I think GT's canon. Oh, GT is actually canon. It would be. Sorry, Christian. It would be, yes. Christian, do you want to go? Your character. <laughs> oh, candy. look, it's a kitty. I'm getting off my desk. Um, Aw. So I am, I'm Christian. Um, I am playing um, a uh, netrunner named Null Pointer. That is, that is his handle. Um... Uh, he has he him pronouns, um, and um, there's not a whole lot um, that is very um, I guess I don't want to say too much about the character, but uh, uh, we we do know that uh, he is employed by uh, Arasaka Corp. Um, he is a clone runner. Um, and uh, he is uh, kind of uh, indebted big time. Uh, I mean, they, they kind of made him. Uh, so uh, he's got an explosive in his head. So uh, he kind of does what they, they say um, and doesn't question it too much. Um, or else, uh, you know, he goes kaboom. So uh, it'll be really interesting. I'm very excited to... Uh, dive into the unique gameplay aspect of playing a netrunner. It's going to be cool. What's a clone Don't runner? It. Um, it's, it's essentially... Um, I haven't dived, dove into the, the lore too much, so I could get some of this stuff wrong, and some of it I'm kind of playing with um, on my own, but um, I, I did read in the rulebook specifically... Um, you can be a clone runner, which is, uh, essentially just, uh, the corporation, um, has, has clones that they dispatch as net runners, um, you know, kind of to do their bidding. So, um, that's as far as I know. Um, and your it character very much, know? um, yeah. Does um, your character know they're a clone? Yeah. Like, is it a Blade Runner situation? <laughs> uh that is uh for you guys to find out oh okay later so, so we probably sh we shouldn't just like straight up like ask about your belly button or anything like that's kind of secret knowledge <laughs> uh, it's offensive <laughs> well is yeah, your character shirtless uh, I mean... your character goes shirtless <laughs> what <laughs> no um, do we know whether or not you have a belly button <laughs> i mean <laughs> no um, Never seen no, you don't have a belly button, or no, we don't know. You do not know. <laughs> do you um, know? Have you decided? We we do not know. Okay. <laughs> many things in this world. Yes, yes, they are. I mean, okay, we're in what? What's the year again? Like twenty twenty forty five something. Yeah. So I mean, technology is advanced very well. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to glance at a glance know if I was human. Are you I saying was. you got a prosthetic belly button like you had it added later? You can body sculpt anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I it was really hard to choose between an Innie or Audi. Honestly, <laughs> that's cyberware. You get to pick one or the other every morning. Do you lose uh, humanity uh, when you pick yeah, certain belly buttons? You absolutely do. Yeah, every every time you switch it from an any to an Audi, you lose humanity. Oh my god! Just All depends right. on the year and uh, what's fashionable. Oh <laughs> uh, well, okay. So, like we mentioned before, we're playing Cyberpunk Red. We are specifically playing uh, the very first mission out of the Jump Start Kit called the Apartment. Um, this is going to be taking place in the player character's apartment. Uh, or at least the introduction is, and then we kind of go out from there. 
So, um, yeah, but before we get into that, I always like to do this before each of my sessions is I like to ask get to know you questions. And I really think this kind of like helps develop like characters, makes makes players think more about like, oh, well, what would what defines this as a character and stuff like that. So before we we streamed, we rolled on a table um, and we picked out a question. Uh, and that question was what or sorry, how old were you when you started working? which I think is a very fitting question for the cyberpunk universe, because like we mentioned before, your character class is kind of like what they do as a job. So it's it's kind of good to to think about like, oh, when did I start doing this job that I've been doing forever? Uh, when did Dan start killing? When did um, Ashley's character, Doc Guy, start start operating? It's, start icing. Was it a... Was it was it licensed? Was it unlicensed? So, um, who wants whoever wants to start us out can start. And then the other thing I want to propose is because it's cyberpunk, have you shared this with the group or have you kept it secret? That's important because oftentimes it's hard to trust. It's hard to trust in this world, and so I think that's a very important thing whether or not you've revealed this information to everybody else. So. So I can start off if you want. Um, so Skull, so Skull would probably say, you know, how first, you know, would you define killing as work, right? Because you know, when you do something you love, uh, you don't work a day in your life. I mean, he wears, so he wears, like, a beanie, like, tank top, shorts. Like, he is just, like, sandals. Like, he just doesn't care. Like, he's just, like, chilling. Yeah. Um, he's living the good life, right? Because he can get yeah. paid a lot of money to do what he loves most. Um, but also, like... When so when did he start killing? Is he kind of was just like born with a gun, like living in it? He grew up in a nomad pack, so he pretty much was born with a gun in his hand. You know, like he kind of had to, right? It, it was probably a little bit more of an aggressive nomad pack. Mm. So, um, perfect. He had to fight to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lawless land out there. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, my my parents had me doing doing toy reviews on the garden since I was like three years old. <laughs> You're one. You were. You grew up as one of those kids that reviewed. Yeah, toys. I was one of those one of those YouTuber kids. <laughs> those YouTuber kids whose parents made, made them the go unpacking on YouTube. Happy Meal videos. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get branding because of? Because I've seen toys that have like little kid branding on it, and I like I, it always astounds me that like they can get like a kid to like be the face on like a toy or something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, my parents sold my likeness. Yeah, but and that's kind of like why uh, I'm a I'm a VTuber now. Like I'm trying to distance myself. From that, like, was, pe people you, don't know that, that, that you, the current online personality, was uh, the that kid. Like, it, there's there's a oh. distinction, and I'm trying to I'm trying to move forward and make my content cooler and more interesting. You're having your child star rebellious face. Yeah, yeah, and and no, I, nobody nobody knows that there's overlap that there there's the two. But will okay. but will you turn out like Ariana Grande or Macaulay Culkin? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like a Neil Patrick was, Harris. Nice. I, oh. I was gonna ask Dalton. Mm -hmm. Has so you so nobody knows this. Nobody's ever tried to blackmail you or anything with that knowledge to expose that to your fan base. Oh no, that's that's in that's in my life path. I have an enemy. Oh, perfect. Okay, then we'll go over that then. <laughs> I, I have I, obviously I'm an online content creator, Spencer. I have beef. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. All right. Um, I can go. Um, Doc Ice uh, actually also grew up in a pretty violent nomadic pack, and that's uh, that's where she met uh, Dan's character. And, um, you know, she had 
been observing some cryo systems operations and maybe around 10 or 11 um dan's dan's dan what's your skull skull came back from a, a mission gone awry and you know his arm was missing and he was just bleeding profusely like his spleen was lacerated um and he wasn't supposed to be out on this mission so i was like well fuck it gotta start sometime so i shoved him in the cryo tank and prayed because otherwise he was gonna die um <laughs> and and yeah so i i it was not licensed um, but I, I started around 10 or 11 just from observing other people, um, kind of taught myself some of the ropes and, um, eventually got into it, uh, professionally and legally. Um, but I definitely still do a lot on the side. Um, Skull is the only one who, who knows this. Everybody else doesn't really have an idea of, of, of this information. Yeah. And I would say because of this, Skull trusts uh, them implicitly, mm. like, like very much so. And but I would also say uh, that would be like when Skull went from like just doing killing as a job to like truly enjoying killing, mm. like lost Ooh. like a part of his humanity because like young Ashley, what was your character's name, Doc? Bones? Doc Ice, Doc but Ice. you you know me as Alaska. Alaska, okay. Uh, when Alaska, like a, a kid, Alaska, you know, did kind of botched it a like they kind of botched it a little bit, right? Yeah, just, just a little bit, just, like not, just enough. not horribly, but it wasn't the most professional job in the world. I mean, oh, I'm no. old. Skull is alive, <laughs> you know, and hey, we're so happy to be alive. We're here. We're killing, right? Yeah, it's a good day to be killing again, but. You know, it lost a little bit of the humanity factor in, in the, you know, we had to replace with some cyber tech with some, you know, I maybe lost my hearing because I've got like a, like a cyber audio suite and I've got like a Santa Vista and so maybe my nerves were shot or something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so. I know it's yes, not a competition, yeah. but I think my backstory is way more tragic. <laughs> it's very much so no i skull skull would agree with 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 you skull <laughs> agrees with you how dare your parents exploit you to open happy meals on camera mm -hmm. it was yeah. the worst my parents are just dead i mean fuck it you know <laughs> like, that's whatever but your parents everybody's parents are dead yeah everyone how many got ours? exploited by their parents yeah exactly <laughs> That's Skull. Skull actually uh, was subscribed to your channel before, before, like, before it was cool. Even meeting, you know? Before, yeah, yeah. Aww. Okay. Like, like maybe like in the because we've talked about our backstory a little bit. I don't want to reveal too much because I think we want to talk about it a little bit more. But maybe, maybe Skull like recognized you when we first met, you know, and was like, "Yo." I follow you. What are you doing here? Yeah, like you, you're such a big fan. Like you didn't even you you like recognize yeah. the voice because like I don't yeah. use my right. real face. <laughs> you were like that. You do. You, whoa, you sound just like this person. Okay, right, right. I I just got a thought because like uh, you know, being a rocker boy, you is supposed to have that that pers uh, that VTuber kind of personality and everything. So what if? Do you, or I want to ask you, Dalton, mm -hmm. does you, because how net running and everything works, we've discussed this a little bit, but it's like having virtual reality goggles on. Mm -hmm. So it kind of projects like the internet, like uh, as you're kind of like looking at stuff, it's like a whole nother layer of the world on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, when people are walking around and they have these VR goggles on, mm -hmm. do they see your avatar? Do you often like project it when you're out in like reality? Um, I don't. I'm trying to the picture VR what, space? what you're describing. Like in the VR space, I guess I would look like my yeah. Like it'd be like VR or chat. AR. Yeah, it's AR. Yeah, more so. But... AR. It's more like AR, I yeah. should say. But like, um, I guess like 
yeah does it appear like your your vr chat like icon when people are like aring around in real life no just because like i don't i don't want people to know that necessarily that i'm your the online persona like if i'm out okay in the day to day i don't necessarily want to be recognized unless Got i want it. to be like okay. i can be i can be like hey this is me and do the thing um yeah but not normally i don't really want that to always be like on and noticeable if that makes sense cool oh yeah absolutely it was just something i thought i don't know that's the coolest thing about cyberpunk is that it's it's so open with like how like for the technology is and everything that mm -hmm. you can do stuff like that so i think it would be neat so yeah cool christian um np um N np doesn't uh have parents um we is not aware of um having any parents um it was when you started when did you start working not parents <laughs> um, a very good question my parents just ended up relating to when we all started working <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, and well, and that kind of, well, yeah, I mean, it just goes into that, right? Um, Drama, man. Um, <laughs> I was a clone. Yeah, um, and NP just uh, can't can't really remember much. Um, it, it has, it has been about a um about a decade ago or so now um uh is, is definitely very um uh seasoned um uh net runner at this point um but uh you could say that um yeah, yeah, I, he basically just got activated by the corporation. Um and and that's all that he can remember is just kind of waking up um and um you know, having so they this, didn't give you... this programming to to, you know, fulfill the needs of the corporation. So yeah. So they um, didn't have even like a basic level like elementary school training or anything. You just came out the pod and just started net running well i mean that was no yeah i mean the the benefit is i mean you kind of have this template right like the slate that oh that that's was already pre predestined for for you right so yeah. um well and anything and... added on to that you know of course i i had modifications and and so on and so forth to as i needed them um cyberware and everything but but yeah a lot of knowledge too. Uh, sorry to to cut in, Christian. Um, Are you good? A lot of in Cyberpunk too, like in the universe, like they have like simulators and stuff, like it, like where you can process like a crap ton of information like instantaneously, right? Kind of like it's not totally like the Matrix, you know, when they're like. You know, they dial in and they're like, hey, I need to learn about helicopters. Like, I need to learn how to fly pilot a helicopter. And all of a sudden, you know, like, I'm no, I know how to pilot a helicopter now, you know? Yeah. I know Kung Fu. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's not as, you know, a, a, as direct as that, but like, there is information that could be artificially uploaded in you can uh, definitely run simulations yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, especially as a net runner right because it's right you're kind of simulating um you know the um how to how to approach that and as time has gone on uh because i've you know i've been uh alive for some time of course you know i've needed to kind of brush up and then enhance on on those things so yeah yeah, Cyberpunk doesn't have like a. Um, what am I trying to think? Of? You ever see watch, watch the show Dollhouse? The weird, not probably nobody's uh -huh. ever watched Dollhouse. What's that? Um, it was a TV show where this is reductive, but it was a very fancy brothel where people would craft like personalities and like zap personalities into people, and like they would sell off their body for a few years. 
And at this brothel, like people would come and they're like, I want this personality person to go on a date with me. And they'd zap that personality into that person's brain. And then they'd be that person for a day. And hmm. the actual person wouldn't remember. But later on, it, it evolved into like people having like USB sticks and like literally just skills on USB sticks that they would like plug into their ear and take out. Because like your brain could only hold so much information. But like there was like, I want to be a good marksman today. And they'd plug in the marksman USB stick hmm. and take it out. I don't think Cyberpunk has stuff like that where you can just like put information I mean, in and take they information have skill out. Chips. Yeah. They, like, do, like they, do, they do have skill chips. Okay. It's yeah. it's not as it's not as like direct as like that or the Matrix, but it's similar to is, yeah. Yeah, it only upgrades the skill to a three. So basically, it's like if you if you don't have anything trained in that skill, you put in the skill chip, and boom, it's level three. So okay, so it's you like can a get nice like, little boost at least. You can get like basic stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, cool. So yeah. Uh. So yeah. Real quick. Did you do you guys share that with everybody? Do you share? I mean, like obviously, I think that Alaska and 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 uh, Skull obviously know that about each other because they were there with each other. But it, it sounds like everybody else did you did you? It's are you keeping that close to your chest? It sounds like it sounds like uh, you probably does. <laughs> yeah, you definitely doesn't doesn't like make it known um, that like I said, you is the old. Uh, mm -hmm. Child, you garden net star. Star is a stretch. Yeah. It was it was like D minus league celebrity. <laughs> so, Ashley, you shook your head no. No, only Skull knows. But for you, I'm assuming that extends to their fan base. Their fan base doesn't know that the two personas are related. Uh, the normal ones don't. There's weird ones. Like Skull. That care too much, yeah. <laughs> There's Don't worry, I won't pointed. tell anyone. I know, <laughs> I know you used there. There, you used to do this. I swear. I like you. Just come up into my apartment, and there's just like red strings, like connecting <laughs> you, like the two channels, like all over the wall. Mm -hmm. Like it's like in my downtime, all that I care about is like connecting. Who is this VTuber? Yeah. I love it. Christian, oh. do we know your your information? Um have you shared it with us? I think that's a hell no. No. Yeah, I think that's a hell no <laughs> also. But, oh, that's just that that's that's no. <laughs> yeah, I mean part of kind of my um our Arasaka Corp uh you know, is obviously very secretive and uh, isn't isn't necessarily wanting me to go on and uh, kind of talking much about what I do. So, <clears throat> okay, great. So yeah, so I, I like I mentioned before, we're doing the apartment out of the Jumpstart Kit, and that's where we kind of start out. This apartment building is um, only four blocks away from the combat zone. So you're pretty close to the action. Like you're 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 kind of getting out of like you walk onto the street and there's direct fire, but like gangs still come up here and everything. Um and one of you is supposed to own this apartment. So my question to all of you is uh who has dead parents and inserted and and inherited this apartment like three years ago? Uh it doesn't have to be three years ago, but it sounds like everybody's parents are dead. So <laughs> except for you. Mm -hmm. My parents are alive. <laughs> so, um, um, it might. My parents yeah. like vanished. Like I don't know what happened to them. So inheriting so, an apartment doesn't seem to fit with my personal backstory in terms of. It could be like an Arasaka is, cover. Like maybe Arasaka ooh. bought it and set up so like a whole fake identity for for Null Pointer. Perfect. I yes. like that. I, yeah, I, I no think pointer. That's, you, because my that's great. skull was a skull was a, a nomad before, so yeah, it doesn't make sense that his parents would have like owned a, an apartment in Night City. Yeah, and like shitty yeah. shitty apartment outside the combat zone is that's like a that's a write off for Arasaka. Like right. yeah, yeah. That's, that's pennies. Right. 
Oh, right. for sure. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah, so no planer. You you can think of whatever reason they're they're setting you up as a cover. Maybe they're just implanting for a later mission or something like that. But you come up with this. But here's here's what you tell everybody in the apartment complex. When you collect rent and everything, um, you're just trying to make ends meet. Most of the rent uh, is just for like repairing the building for gangs that drive by and stuff like that, but also bribes to keep the building safe. And you tell everyone, oh, it just breaks even, barely. But you know exactly like that you're, you're covered. So. <laughs> well, I'm glad my social skills uh, are not good. Um, so... <laughs> Not sure how I'm pulling this off, but yeah. <laughs> I just, Maybe everybody I just, raises I just an show eyebrow. show my katana if there's ever an issue. Just questions. <laughs> well, actually, the thing is, um, most of the time, you actually, you guys know, you specifically know, Pointer, you have a fixer that usually handles paying off all the booster gangers and stuff like that. The local fixer named Rex. So you actually yeah. don't have to do most of the talking. He usually handles it for you. So he's the guy that you pay to kind of make sure the booster gangers don't mess up the apartment building that much or, or does, shoot you guys dead as you walk out. Does Rex so. have tiny arms? No. No, he does not. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's R-E-X, thank you. Uh, wait, is that how you spell T-Rex? What? Pretty sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, is, I was trying to figure out what you were trying to get at Can there. Oh, anyway. Yo, what's up, Tommy Rex? <laughs> or is Rex's first name? So. <laughs> Are you just moving it's on from this? Or is it... just Rex. You're, mov you're moving on from just this. Rex. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, anyways. Uh. <laughs> all right, so, okay. for the most part, it's a, it's a good situation compared to the rest of the city. Because, like I said, you're just outside the combat zone, but you, you could be paying way more rent compared to other parts of the city, even if it is nicer, and you could literally be in a combat zone as soon as you step out your door. So, to be honest, it's pretty it's pretty good, and you know this because they're uh, on the roof. Um, it's got a beautiful city uh, view of the city. Just, like, could be on the back of a postcard. Just beautiful scene. Um, so, it's great. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so now that we've kind of talked a little bit about all of that, let's go ahead and talk about our life paths. So in session zero, one of the main things that, that Cyberpunk kind of does is have everybody kind of go through different tables and <clears> roll <throat> up these different life paths. So um, I think we covered a little bit about it before, but yeah, uh, if we want to just go around, talk about our life paths a little bit, what kind of led us to being in this apartment complex and being here so close to the combat zone and yeah uh, also important things to note if you do have any family members or any relationships that are close by are they currently living with you are they living with you in your apartment complex there are currently enough rooms for everybody in the apartment complex but do you have other family members uh doc ice and skull do you two live with each other um how does that all just kind of work out together and yeah. However we want to start. Um I mean, I think I think Skull would probably consider Doc Ice like a little sister or something. Yeah. You know. Um say we're like neighbors but we're not in the same unit. Right. Like across the hall. Yeah. Uh, it's like how Spencer and I were out at the fraternity house in college. Aww. Yeah. Just like Yay. clarification, like, do you want us to just go through, like, what, like, all of the stuff in our life path, like, our origins, like, personality, like, valued persons, yeah, friends, absolutely. enemies, and stuff? You just want us to, like, run through that from top to bottom? Yes. You want to take it away, Dalton? Sure. I guess I did kind of walk into that, didn't I? You, you did. did. Um, you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the silence I was kind of waiting. I was like, Yeah, damn. All right. You uh kind of your <clears throat> traditional what you would expect, like uh North American in like your what is this like central California, Southern California ish area. Um mm -hmm. they're kind of like nervous and like picky and a little bit fussy, like 
off the off the blush they're kind of like dressed in like sweats and sweatpants and stuff like long ratty hair um almost like uh if you picture like uh aizawa from my hero academia when he's not teaching like when he's in nice. when he's like chilling just um, in like the sleeping yeah. bag yeah um <laughs> but like was like the long like kind of messy hair and stuff and just like dead eyes um uh values like i i i rolled friendship but more like her ch like their chat um and like the like the donators and stuff like that's that's friends that's parasocial friendship but that's friendship um yeah uh but like loves loves their chat but like also just like hates almost everyone they meet in real life like IRL just mm -hmm. doesn't interact well in real life um val other value person is probably like i didn't like thought that fully through but probably like some like other important like net person like garden personality who's like really cool that they kind of like mm -hmm. aspire to and like aspire to aspire to be i guess um yeah i mentioned my most valued possession is my like mint copy of like dragon ball volume one um yes i come from like a background of like edge runners and grew up in like a big like mega structure like really big big building like everything was in the building didn't really have to do a whole lot of leaving um <laughs> unfortunately like i mentioned my family was like kind of using me to make some like side money to like have me put up put up videos but um there was like an accident in the building and we all kind of like got got blown in different directions um and i want to gain a lot of like fame and recognition um i don't have any like close friends or like tragic love affairs or anything but i do have one enemy um it's some some corporate exec was on one of my streams and he called jojo's bizarre adventure mid um and i was not going to take that i wasn't going to take that no. sitting down um and like I, not even a specific part just all of it yeah and and I, I i called him out publicly and unfortunately some of my more rabid fan base uh it may have it may have put a car bomb uh <laughs> in one oh, of the that vehicles. was me that was skull sorry uh and 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 uh and, and blew up his girlfriend <laughs> Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. That was Skull, sorry. Wow. <sighs> That's what He's happened. He's a really loyal fan. Like Jojo's. if like if you don't yeah. like JoJo's is really good, okay? <laughs> I don't even know in this timeline if it made oh it past god. battle tendency. I don't even know if it made it to stance, but it's still really good. <laughs> in this timeline. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Oh, man. Uh, who Anybody wants to run else through their life path next? Yeah. I can go. I'll go. Um, so, Skull. Um, his cultural origins, he's uh, Oceania uh, Pacific Islander. Um I don't know if there's anything, you know, more to that, like where that comes from. I think, I mean, it makes sense. He's in LA, right? Mm -hmm. um, personality, he's intellectual and detached. Um, I guess that's supposed to how it's going to be. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to play that because I think I'm just going to change that, to be honest, because I'd rather play a little bit more of a fun and upbeat character because I think that'd be, yeah. you know, a little bit more fun. Absolutely. Uh, clothing style, I rolled bohemian. Uh, which is like folksy, retro, free-spirited. Um, you know, you can see with my character, I went kind of with like just free, free-spirited, really. Uh, a little, a little retro, I guess, for cyberpunk. You know, like with like the retro beanie and the the, the sandals and the, you know, why is he wearing a beanie and shorts and sandals? Like, is he hot or cold? No one knows. Um, <laughs> So he values uh, knowledge most. Um, 
he is untrustworthy towards people. Like he's just very, he finds people very untrustworthy. His most valued person is a mentor. I still don't know who that is. Um, I'm still thinking yeah, of like we'll who that, that could out. be. Yeah. The most valued possession is I think we mentioned. Um, mine was like a letter. Um, family background, nomad pack, childhood environment, deserted city. So, uh, family crisis, betrayal, life goals, live down past life. So, what I kind of imagine is, but the the other problem is, is that I also rolled that he is totally evil. Like, literally, like the highest evil, it says you engage in Ill in fact, you enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> so oh, beautiful. Yeah. Oh man. So and like I go into the combat to fight, kill people, like come back out. Um, and then there's like a corrupt lawman or a lawman uh, who mistakenly thinks I'm guilty of something. So mm. like. I think it'd be kind of a funny bit if there was a lawman who's like, you killed this one person. And if I were like, no, I've killed lots of people, but not that guy. But you not know? that one. Yeah, I've killed, <laughs> trust me, a lot of people. Not that one, though. <laughs> I wouldn't know if I killed that one, you know? That, that yeah. one wasn't me. <laughs> um, Some private, so, private eye dick with a, with a grudge. Right, exactly. Yeah, like, just trying to bring me down for something, right? Like, yeah. Um, I know, I'm gonna get that skull one day. Yeah, but the funny thing is I don't have an, any, any, so, <laughs> like, I, like, it's just, like, <laughs> like, the guy's just doing his job, like, I don't know, <laughs> like, he doesn't hate me personally, he's just doing his job, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, um, I, I don't know how it all fits together, I mean, the way I kind of, I guess I do know, uh, the way I kind of imagine it fitting together is... Like, I had a nomad family, like, they died. Like, we were in some sort of deserted city when the reclaimers came. Like, some of our nomad pack betrayed the other part of the nomad pack. My parents died. I left. Like, maybe I, like, when I was, like, a teen, like, I met someone. They were a mentor to me, taught me how to, like, you know, kill and stuff. And then we they ended up dying or splitting ways or something. I don't know. Maybe I have like a letter from them or a letter from my parents. I don't know what the letter is yet. But um, I'm thinking that's kind of the deal with my dude's life path. And then, you know, came back from a mission, met um, Alaska. Alaska saved his life, even if she turned him into a murder whore. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Perfect. Alaska, do you want to, do you want to go next? Sure, I'll go next. Okay. Um, so... Uh, I wear high fashion clothes. I value honor. The most valued person, uh, is myself. Um, because I trust no one. Um, my family basically vanished at a young age. I don't really know what happened. Um, I'm kind of envisioning that I got picked up by this, um, nomadic pack that's a ganger family. I'm kind of imagining that Skull and Alaska were on opposite sides of that betrayal and we got kind of separated, um, after this incident where where he he came back in pretty rough shape and i saved him but you know at, at what cost Ooh, i love that the plot thickens you were on the other side of the yep and that's why i don't entirely trust you even though i've known you since childhood right um right. oh that's so that's so cyberpunk right <laughs> that's so cyberpunk. Um, but I, because of this incident, and I, I feel that people are un untrustworthy and I can't depend on anyone. I don't know who's going to turn around and stab me in the back next. Um, which, along with that, that's, that's why I like my assault rifle best. It's, it's not going to stab me in the back. Um, 
Unless somebody else is handling it, in which case it's not the assault rifle's <laughs> fault. Um, yeah. And ultimately, I just want to get off the streets. I I want to get out of this life. I want to have the idyllic, normal life. Um, deep down, I know that's never going to happen. But I imagine I read stories of the American dream. Um you know, growing up, and it's kind of always what I've wanted was just to have a normal life, but no, that never happens anymore. Um, I pick it, friends. Yep. Yep. Um, apparently, I had one tragic love affair. <gasps> it just didn't work out. Mm. I imagine it's because I have deep-seated trust issues. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> I do have two enemies. Um, it is a one my boss and someone who's also working for me. Um, my boss made a move on me, um, and oh. I turned them down. Um, again, deep seated trust issues, and also I felt like it was inappropriate. Um, and it's on the trauma team, for yeah. you work for a trauma team, or okay. Oh, yeah, I work for a, a big corporation trauma team. Um, so, like, corporate medicine. Um, so, like, if you've seen the Edge Runner anime, like, going out there and, you know, scanning, like, oh, you have the Platinum membership. We will absolutely take you on the helicopter. Um, or, oh, uh, you only have basic. Um, we'll call you an Uber. 90% of your feet <laughs> will be covered by your... <laughs> Platinum plan. Pretty much. <laughs> um, but uh, I also have another enemy, and it's uh, I I um I kind of lead a trauma team, and it's one of my med techs. Um, and I betrayed them to save me um, to get out of a tight situation. Um, I imagine with my boss because my boss um likes to make moves on all of his employees i feel like because he's a gross piece of shit um but i kind of threw them under the bus because i didn't want to deal with my boss making moves on me again um yeah and because i've got this kind of because i work for this corporate med tech team that's where i kind of get all of my uh, access to medical and, and cryo systems tanks, um, I kind of have this back door in. So that's how I take care of uh, people like Skull on the side. <laughs> um, and it's sheer chance that I ended up in the same apartment complex as the rest of the team here. Does does this this world have like off world colonies? I know like Blade Runner, it's a whole thing where like the people left on Earth are just kind of like the the people. There are stuck people there. on the moon that throw rocks to anybody who fucks with them. They throw rocks back into the atmosphere to destroy people. That's it. There's just like some moon stuff. As far as I know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think there I think there may have been a little bit of Mars stuff in um the book that inspired Blade Runner, but I can't remember. Spencer, do you remember if there was like any Mars stuff? Do androids dream of electric sheep? I haven't seen anything with Mars in any of the lore that I've read. I don't, I don't necessarily know about Mars, but there were like off world colonies mentioned in Blade Runner. And there's all like get a better world, get a better life off world kind of like advertisements. There mm -hmm. There it is seems the, like space. Um, yeah, uh, I was gonna say in Cyberpunk there is the uh, like, was the Crystal Palace? There's like an orbit, like there's a space orbiting, um, uh, like colony essentially. It's like the end game of Cyberpunk 2077. Sorry. Spoilers, Jesus. No, you're good. It's I haven't. Massive, I have It's not a massive spoiler. Like, it's it's a mm -hmm. little bit, but. So there's like space. <laughs> there's it's like the space. destination, not what happens at the destination. <laughs> okay, so it looks like there's like big space stations that people live on. 
like Dan Dan was saying, but maybe not necessarily like off yeah. the colony, like colonies it, on like it, a it, Mars or Venus or something. I, it looks like on page four of the Jumpstart Kit, Kit World Book, they they mentioned the orbital war uh, by mid twenty twenty two, and it talks about like it, you know this was like just a bunch of uh, cyber attacks disrupted thinking information media services it looks like orbital space narrowly escaped becoming another battlefield only because the space dwelling high riders began to hit both sides with lethal suborbital artillery strikes capable of wiping out most of a small city so there are people that live in like orbital space mm -hmm. that throw rocks at people they that piss them off so okay. Uh, if there's more information, I haven't found it. No, you're good. I was curious <laughs> if maybe, like, Ashley's character is, like, if they're looking for, like, greener pastures, like, American Dream, like, what's the equivalent of yeah, that Yeah, maybe now? going to space is, like, the new equivalent. Yeah. Because, like, going America fucking blows, or are you just trying to oh, get yeah. to, like, Europe? Like, are you just trying to, like, get to, like, Neo-France or whatever? I don't know. Is Neo-France better than here? Good question. Maybe. I, I think in the I'm world, trying to go to Neo Canada. Is, Canada in, is always better than America, so I'm going to go to Canada. I do know in the world of cyberpunk, America is like backwaters, like bad place, and there are mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. places on the planet. Because like, what was it in like 1988? Like the, the tipping point was like the EU becoming like the dom dominant economic power. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's why yeah, they're that's Europe, why they're but... called eddies. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Christian, what's your life path? I know you, you've kind of already talked about it a little bit. Yeah. So, <clears throat> as far as um, you know, what you can tell, um, aesthetically, I guess you could say I, I'm a, it, I'm a clone. So you know, just like well, like my cultural origins, like well, you know you could assume that it's based off of um, East Asian. I am uh, uh, no, uh, no pointer or NP is uh, definitely, definitely a Japanese um, uh, clone. Um, it's that's part of the Arasaka Corp. It's just retaining that, that, um, you know, Japanese image. Um, uh, NP is uh, is sneaky and deceptive. Um, it's it's kind of um, how he finds um, you know getting through through the world and what is asked of him um, the easiest. Um, typically, uh, taking taking things head on uh, is is a lot more difficult um, and. Uh, yeah, so um, typically outfitted in business wear, otherwise, um, you know, has some uh, some net runner um, armor and, and things like that. Um, one one kind of hallmark trait of of NP is this Irizumi tattoo um, all along his arms and and back. Um, much, much like a yak or a, 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 a someone who's is part of the uh, yakuza, um, in yeah. in the form of a snake. So, um, so so yeah. Um, uh, so you know, slicks back hair, um, a little bit uh, kind of undercut as well. So a little bit more punky, but uh, still has that that uh, kind of classic um, style there. Um, he is very much driven by knowledge, um, and uh, and and is looking to get, kind of get what's rightfully his or what he believes is so. Um, um, yeah, so that's all I'll say on that. Um, uh, he his most valued possession is his is his weapon. Um, he actually has. Um, and I have to check to make sure I have this right. Yes, in his left arm, he actually has a um, um, a cybernetic arm in his left arm, and it's, it has a melee pop up installed. So out from his left cyber arm comes his his uh, heavy katana that he wields. Um, so he loves sharpening that. Um, 
the past time. Um, but yeah, uh, I he has is pretty solitary. He has a friend. Uh, his only friend is is an internal agent, uh, actually. Um, uh, you could say possibly maybe it's uh, more than just friendship, but uh, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, this is kind of because of the tragic love affair that he had. Um, he actually lost a lover uh, do uh, die after going cyber psycho. Um, police said it was a suicide, but um, everybody well, else knows better. Huh. I mean, you'd be foolish to think, you know, uh, assume suicide in in, uh, in this world. So, um, yeah. but it's a possibility. Um, yeah. So that's that's it's very tragic. You know, do you, do you have like an implement, like an implanted backstory, like a fake thing, or like when you think back on it, it's just like empty, like there's nothing there. Um, yeah. So, um, there is is really nothing. Um, that that uh, no pointer. Uh, he, he hasn't really had, um, has anything to kind of draw on. Um, there's, there's, um, you know, there's, there's the story, um, that was given to him as he woke up, you know, he's, he works for the corporation and that's basically has been his identity. Um, but as he's lived, he's kind of made a story for himself, but that's mm -hmm. all that really he, he has to, has to, to tell there for now. Um, so. <clears throat> All right. Perfect. Well, um, first off, I'm going to take off these glasses now, just like I did before. Wait, wait. Oh, hold on. They flash. They blink. And, and there we go. So <laughs> those shutter shades make it a little bit hard to read. So. <laughs> All right. I have one last question for everybody before we kind of get more into the game. And we actually kind of hop into the map, hop into the apartment and stuff like that. And we discussed a little bit off stream, but how did the crew come together? Um, I made mention uh, last week uh, talking about crew and stuff like that. On page 390 of the core rulebook, it gives examples of how different crews can come together. It can be anything from corporate troubleshooters working for a company such as like Arasaka. You know, maybe they have Null Pointer as like their their clone runner, but then they have your extra companions, shall we say, to come in and help give you some extra muscle. You could be a private investigation firm or a crew of investigative reporters if you got like a media on your team, or maybe even like you dips into that later on. Uh, Nomad Smuggling Pack. I know that Doc Ice and Alaska Bones have kind of separated from nomad life but if they ever got reached out by maybe like a different family that they knew outside of the betrayal um and of course trauma team which actually you know uh your character doc ice definitely is part of a trauma team maybe these other guys get hired on to kind of help provide you extra muscle when you land into different uh, like combat zones but you know um i think we discussed something different from all of that what what's kind of the reason everybody here got together well, we kind of discussed that uh, uh, Fixer Rex, he uh, individually all hired us for a job. Um, I brought on Skull because I had uh, we'd reconnected because we ended up incidentally living across the uh, hallway from each other um, after we got separated a while ago, and I've kind of been. Trying to work on rebuilding my trust, if nothing else, you know, Skull pays me good money when he comes back with his spleen lacerated. Funny enough that it happened <laughs> twice, but, um, you know, Those if I had a nickel, I'd you. have two nickels, but it's just weird it happened twice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, we, uh, I, I brought Skull on and... Um, I imagine Rex hired NP and you separately, and we just kind of all... What was the job, guys? What did we get hired to do? So I think what we talked about was, like, and how this would tie Christian in is, like, there was a politician, or Arasaka Corp, like, hired us through a fixer to... 
uh, like basically frame a politician. And that's also how yeah. like Dalton's character got brought in because he's, you know, like a media expert, right? Yeah. Or like a rocker boy, um, like has a presence and can use his fan base to like expose this politician or something. Right. Like, I don't, that was like one idea, but did yeah, no, was... I, I, I absolutely agree with that. I, I think just because there has for a long time been, you know, these, this, this, um, struggle, um, this, uh, kind of tension between corporations. Um, and I, I, think the you know it makes the most sense that this politician uh probably went to bat and was going to you know um put some law in place or or something like to that effect to to really give another corporation um arasaka's kind of direct competition like um, an edge yes like yeah yeah um so I see, you know, NP was really like tasked with like getting on board with this and and um, working with this fixer to kind of get away from it being tied to Arasaka and and framing. Um, but anybody else has input there? Great. I think that sounds great. No, yeah, I think that's all good. That's awesome. <laughs> It it yeah. it sounds sounds like a cyberpunk. It sounds <laughs> cyberpunk. Yeah, it's it's hard to, to really say for sure because we don't really know what the current apartment gig is and like scale of it and stuff. It's like I don't yeah. know what this new it, job it's is. It's five floors. Well, it's I mean, like, like five floors. It's yeah. The the adventure, right? Like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. Yep. Well, we can we can hop into that here in just a second. So why don't we go ahead and take a quick break? And when we come back, we'll hop into the apartment. We'll hop into the adventure and uh, we'll we'll boot it up for real. You guys get to meet your neighbors and then kind of see what happens from there. So, yeah, uh, we'll be back after a quick short break. So stay tuned and uh, let's let's get fucking nova chooms <laughs> all right <laughs> welcome back everybody to the abc's of rpgs where we teach you the basics of tabletop role-playing games my name is spencer reese i am your game master for today and i'm joined by my players dalton hey everybody i'm i'm dalton i've got he him pronouns i'm playing the rocker boy character you who has they them pronouns Dan, want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Dan. Hey, guys. Uh, my camera is broken today. Uh, I'm going to get a new one this week for next week's stream. So sorry about that. Uh, I have he, him pronouns. I'm playing a uh, solo character named Skull. He also has he and him pronouns. Um, and yeah, so introducing our next player, Ashley. It's Ashley. I use she, her pronouns, and I am playing a character named Alaska Bones. Um, on the streets, she goes by Doc Ice. She is a med tech, um, and she uses she, they pronouns. And lastly, Christian. Hi, I'm Christian. I'm playing the, the net runner. Um, my pronouns are he, him. Um, and yeah. I'm excited to get started into it. What's okay. your netrunner's name? NP or null null pointer goes by that. <laughs> All right, Spencer. Well. Let's get into the apartment. Perfect. Let's get into the job. All right. So yeah, so basically we discussed that base. Uh, yeah, that uh, there is an apartment complex you guys all live in. Um, I'll go ahead and drag you. Do, 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 do. So this is your apartment. Um, you should be able to see kind of like the top left. There's a a few rooms open and uh, some hallways that you can see into, and a few of the rooms are. Uh, uh, darkened because they belong to a few other people. But let me go ahead and drag your character tokens onto here. 
And why don't you guys go ahead and pick out which apartment is yours? There are two that are right next to each other. So I remember uh, Dan and Ashley said that that Skull and Doc Ice live next to each other. So maybe you'll take these two up here and everything. But go ahead and place yourselves in the room. And also, don't forget to change your color in the bottom left for each of your characters to your colors. Um, hey, Spence. I Remind me, how yeah. am I to edit or drag my character? Yeah, we need time? permissions for that. Oh, I thought, it, is it not in your handouts? I, it, I thought I assigned it to everybody. Let's see here. Let's see. So we can we can make new tokens that we can control. The ones you placed, yeah, we don't no. have have control yeah. over. Can you just delete oh. the one that you made for me? I dragged mine there. on. There we go. Cool. Wait. I'm gonna be in this room across that. the hallway. I'm gonna be in this room. Oh boy. Okay. Hold on. How do I make new token? Sorry. You go to the third icon that looks like a little journal, and then under characters. Yeah. You drag your name onto the screen on roll 20. It's a drag. Interesting. Yeah, you click and drag. Yeah, I see. I see your character has Yeah, appeared. we're there. We're there. Okay. Perfect. No pointer uh, snagging that corner apartment right away. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the slumlord. He and can also, move wherever he wants. He can. He... <laughs> He's been here the entire time. Uh, and don't forget to change your, your Roll20 color, uh, Dan, to, uh, to green. Doing, doing that right now. Perfect. Great. Awesome. Uh, I've also linked the Cyberpunk Edge Runners uh, soundtrack in the chat. Um, so make sure that, um, or just, I recommend just like putting on, on Shuffle Play in the background at like a low volume. Just because, like I said, uh, cyberpunk is all about style and substance. So really getting the feel of cyberpunk as we kind of like go into it is is super key. So, um, yeah. So each of you probably chilling out in your apartments, doing having some fun. Um, let's say, let's see here. You have a variety of different neighbors. Um, I'm gonna say that Christian. Um, First off, what do you usually do in your free time? What 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 are you doing when you're just kind of relaxing around in your apartment? Are you surfing the nets? Are you doing something like that? Are you staring at a wall? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, uh, no pointer has a uh, has a very uh, sophisticated but clean layout of uh, multiple monitors and and tech and. And kind of, uh, um, you know, all all of this uh, kind of neatly placed and organized around his his desk. Um, it's kind of the command center um, where um, he's able to kind of um, run diagnostics and di different things there, uh, as far as the uh, net running goes. And um, conveniently enough. Um, is able to connect to the the net of uh, this this establishment as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, typically, it's just uh, it's it's really just going through um, you know communications. Of course, the boring stuff with with the corp, uh, uh, but uh, um, yeah, just brushing up on my skills and sharpening my blade literally and figuratively perfect awesome so yeah so while you're just kind of like sharpening your skills like you're saying while you're kind of like doing all of that you hear a just a pop 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 like a knock on your door all right um so np uh he, he kind of um jacks out safely of the net um and uh and kind of yells over, who is it? Hey, yo, it's Rico. You hear uh, a familiar voice coming from outside the door. Nate, uh, it's from Rico Robinson, and I'll go ahead and show him on the map. 
Uh, Rico Robinson, as you know, is kind of a retired uh, rocker boy, I guess you could say. He, 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 he was in a band, and he used to do gigs all over town. Now he's, he's semi-retired. He still does gigs every once in a while, um, like at the local places around here and everything. And oftentimes, so he lives on the floor above. So most of the time, you're waking up in the morning due to him playing his trumpet as loudly as he can. He has soundproof walls, but you can still hear it. Um, as the day kind of progresses, he shifts instruments to like drums and guitar uh, at lunchtime. And so on and so forth. So it's probably still early in the day. It's probably around 10 o'clock. He probably started playing the trumpet around 8 a.m. Uh, but you did hear the trumpet playing stop maybe like a, a few minutes before you heard him kind of knock on the door. And so he, he yells out to you. He goes, it's Rico! Uh, I uh, kind of just... I, 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 NP looks at his wrist and... and uh, and he says, oh, time, time really got away from me today. Uh, um, yeah, Shimaru, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and I kind of go, go over to the do door and, uh, and, and just open it up just a bit, just enough, uh, yeah, just kind of have my, my body, uh, take up the space open by the door. Yeah. So, what, what do you want? Hey! Just want to let you know, she had made some home cooking down the way. Why don't you grab your crew and go get a bite, huh? Oh, what what crew are you talking about? I, I typically run your pretty crew, solo. Your crew, what are you talking about? The people you always hang out with. That tall guy who likes his big giant wax stick. Uh, the other doctor here, and, uh, I don't know, that, that one, one person who was always holed up in their room or whatever. You hear me, like, yelling about Fist of the North Star down the hallway? <laughs> <laughs> always going on about that anime crap. I mean, stuff. You know what I mean. We did, we did one, you know, one, one gig. And, uh, now they're to my crew. I don't know what there you're your talking crew. about, Rico. The crew, you don't choose your crew, your crew choose you. Well, you know, uh, I appreciate it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let him know, I guess. Yeah, you know, you know where Gina's at. She, she, you know, visit her soon. You don't want her to get antsy. And, uh, he just kind of, he just kind of walks off. You presume back to his place because after a few minutes, you hear the the uh, trumpet noises resume from above above the way above above you. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll get ready. Guess I'll go knock on their doors. Okay. Um. Yeah. So MP, you know, kind of. Uh, washes off his face, uh, you know, um, brushes his teeth and, and, uh, just kind of tries to pick himself up. It's, uh, it's pretty early and, uh, he's been up all night. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and tries to wipe the sleep from his eyes and, um, well, the no sleep really, the, the exhaustion. Um, yeah. And then he, he gets out of his apartment and uh, goes to the, what is the nearest one? Um, hey. Yeah, Doc Geis' apartment. You typically, do, do I refer to you as Doc Geis at this point, right? Yeah, you call me yeah. Doc Geis. Or Doc. Uh, Doc. <laughs> Doc. Alright. I'll talk to Doc. So I go over there and knock on your door. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Doc! What do you want? I heard there's some oh, good that's... food. If you want it or not, I don't give a shit. I kind of perk up. I drag myself out of bed. I was reading a book. Go to the front door. I crack it. And I say, you said food, NP? Yeah, just down that way, and I point in the in the direction. Yeah, yeah. 
Gina's is the yeah. last room at the top. Yeah, over here. The oh, okay. poison? Yeah, I don't care. I got toxin binders. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I uh, g come out, knock on, knock on Skull's door, and I uh, basically go, uh, you know, like, kind of bang on it, and I'm like, big bro, wake up. Skull cannot hear your knocks. Uh, as you can see, he is currently on the... He has a pair of headphones on, uh, full volume, blasting, like, old 90s, 2000 pop star hits, like Britney Spears and uh, Christina Aguilera. Like, he's just dancing. Like, you got some boy bands in there, too. He's got, like, it, like he's, like, some real retro stuff. He, like, he just... Like one of his tombs just turned him on to a lot of this stuff, and exactly, and he's like, "Whoa, man! These these classics are, are 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 incredible." You know, he's been dancing all night on the table. Oh my gosh, amazing! And he doesn't, um, he doesn't hear you. Is your door locked? Uh, probably roll for that. <laughs> 50 50 didn't chance, even honestly, lock yeah. it when he stumbled. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. You know, it, it, he's one of those. You know, he's one of those guys. Like he's not afraid. Like he kind of hopes. Actually, no. Yeah, it is unlocked. He hopes someone breaks in. It's unlocked. All right, I just open it and walk in. I'm like, bro, take he those headphones out and stop listening to that shitty music. He still doesn't hear you. There's free food. I walk in and I basically just wave my hand in front of his face. So for for reference, my my uh he has level dampeners, like a cyber audio suite dampeners in. So like he's immune to loud sounds. So he like can like blare it as loud as he wants, you know, and like be totally fine. Yeah. Like, and he has like, like mega headphones. I kick the table to s try to get your attention that you're standing on top of. Yeah. He, he looks over and goes, Oh, Oh. And like turns off the headphones. What's up, Alaska. How you doing? Bro, there's food. You want free food? Oh. Yeah, you know it. Oh, say less. Where? Where's the food? I don't know. I, I, come out and I, look at, I look at MP and I was like, hey, I heard there was. Well, should we get the weirdo? Do you, where's the, hold on, and I, I pull a gun out. And I, where's the food? Where's the food? <laughs> Come on, we gotta get the weirdo too. We can't, we can't leave him out. Oh, okay. And I put the gun away, and I go and I knock on. I, I, I forgot your character's name again, Dalton. I'm so sorry. Uh, you. The character's name is you. You. Why Thank you, you. you. I go and knock on you's door. You, you from the other side of the door, you faintly hear like, "Look, without Fist of the North Star, you wouldn't have Berserk. You wouldn't have JoJo's Bizarre Adventure." <laughs> I sorry, and I I I, I, I cut the stream. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I go I go answer the door. <laughs> hey, uh, well, actually, I don't I don't know why I'm knocking on your door. Food, oh, no. it's, called, uh, it's food. Well, you it's know, food I was and we have to include food, the weirdo. But I haven't been given the food yet. I mean, I pointed a gun at MP and, and everything, and he didn't give me the food. Why? Like, where's the food? I was told there'd be food. I'm getting upset. I'm getting a little heated. Okay. I see. Where's You're making food? him upset. <laughs> Does this every time? Come on, you. Let's go. Okay. Go where? We're getting food. Okay. NP, come on, lead us. I'm hungry. Gaul's waving around weapons again. I'm here Wait, already. Wait, Pointy is right getting here. us food? So... NP's paying, right? No, Pointer. You know that Gina's apartment is down here, 
kind of on the on the right side and on on the the top part of the map. Do you see where I'm pinging right now? Oh yeah. Sorry, I haven't slept. No, you're time. good. <laughs> NP, you're leading us astray, and Skull is waving his weapon around. I'm gonna shoot someone. I swear to God, I'm gonna shoot someone. I was just having a smoke. While well, I'm waiting for you, assholes. You're gonna be I'm trying to better point a gun watch at that me? language. I'm not gonna let you into a well, cyber team next over time here someone shoots your arm off. At me. You don't want to see the blade that I have stocked away here. Okay, okay, <laughs> Edgelord. Look, just take us to the food. You're buying. <laughs> You interrupted my right. my my. All right. I was, I was, I'll knock on the door. I was pop, deep, pop, deep, pop. deep. Gina, you hear a <laughs> you hear a a uh, uh like a, an older woman's voice kind of call back. Yeah, I'm I'm coming. Is that you guys? Is that is that no pointer? Yeah. What what's going on? You got I heard you got some food for us. Something. Yes, yes, I'll unlock the door, and as she goes to unlock the door, uh, you know you know this, but this is a common noise for you now. When you knocked on the door, you hear, you heard the, the barking of a dog. Uh, normally not a sound you would hear uh, uh, inside of a, an apartment uh, and everything, but you do hear the sound of a dog kind of barking um, and the rustling of movement behind. But uh, Gina comes, uh, opens up the door for you, and, and lets you in. Um, as she kind of guides you inside, uh, the the main things that you notice is is Gina is kind of like an older woman, maybe in her mid fifties, um, and you would you've been in her apartment before. She's probably giving you food before and everything. But the the main thing that's very unique about this apartment complex is that uh, um, she has a a, a salmon crested cockatoo. Uh, a why a is it dog a named Puddles. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, I was working with what I got, okay? I only have, <laughs> only have the same thing, so... Okay, sorry. She has a salmon-crested cockatoo named Puddles. She has a Al Aldabra tortoise uh, named Spooky. Uh, she has a veiled chameleon. Um, and... Yes. And uh, this is, blah, 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 blah. This is and then separate she has from a poodle. the food, right? Yes. This isn't the food? This is separate from the food, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you hear the barking of this small dog, but you come in and the the, the, the cockatoo's just kind of like flying about and everything. The chameleon's in like a tank and, and the turtle's also in kind of like a uh, uh, like a cage. But she she ushers you in. She goes, come in, come in. You know, I, I, I fed these guys, but, you know, my roommates always leave the leftovers, uh, uh, poodles, uh, everything, you know, they just, they just can't hold their own, and I'm, yeah. Anyways, come, come, sit down, sit down. And she ushers you to, like, the table mm. where, uh, she has four, four portions of, um, of a very nice home-cooked dinner. It is, it is mashed potatoes, uh, without gravy, but it is mashed potatoes, like, instant potatoes, but instant mashed potatoes. And one single spoon serving of scrambled eggs. Which you can probably assume are the eggs from uh her from from Rico her her bird, but uh, she probably took them and then made scrambled. Right, it's also the bird. I thought puddles <laughs> was the bird. Uh, Gina, no, what puddles no, is the Rico dog is the salmon crested cockatoo. Puddles is the turtle, and Spooky is her her chameleon. Sorry if I didn't say What's that. What's the dog's name? The the dog's name is is po uh, Poddles. Poddles. So Wait, it's so Puddles. Puddles. Puddles the turtle and Puddles. And Puddles. And Puddles. <laughs> How am I supposed to remember this? You don't. <laughs> I'm gonna eat them all. Are they real? Are they alive? So that's that's the thing. Are they live or are they robots? As you as you guys know. Human uh, live animals are very rare, but each of these animals are live animals. So, I'm eating them. I turn to um, NP and I, I kind of mutter under my breath, "Like, what is she paying in pet rent every month?" 
And that's the problem, is that she hasn't been. And I told her, and I told her, and we're going to have another conversation you, I, here. These are my roommates. How many times do I have to say that? We all share this apartment complex together, so we pay rent for the apartment. That's how you know, it MP, works. MP, if you want, I, I could always... Uh... Help you oh, out don't here. even. Don't even. If, if, hey, well, if she can't pay, maybe they're... You know, He's uh, beating if she us. Owes, if she owes you back, well, hey, there's something else I could eat. And I look I look at the bird. And I was like, you look like a nice chicken wing. <laughs> you don't eat your friends. And Rico is a very good friend of mine. So no bird legs for you, Skull. Right. Well, the average... Skull's fighting the urge to pull out a gun and shoot this lady in the head. Like, he is really fighting the urge. Like, like he is just, like, like staring off into blank space, like, mouth open, just like... I, I, and he's I, not going to do it, but he's just like... Uh, I, I kind of noticed that. It's like, Skull, Skull, just go, go sit down and start eating. Uh, you'll you'll feel better. And I'm saying this as I'm like picking up the lizard and I'm like putting the lizard on my head. He's like petting the lizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Skull goes over um, and sits down and just like grabs uh, the eggs and just starts eating. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, like as you guys know, like instant mashed potatoes and eggs, like fresh eggs, super rare. Like this is actually like a home cooked meal for you guys it, and it's not um, kibble it's probably <laughs> it's not kibble it's probably one of the best things you've had in like that it's a good thing this there's that's probably the reason why you were first off interested in free food but the second thing is you know that gina always shares because her roommates always have leftovers for you guys so i eat it and i don't ask questions but i'm thinking to myself like it is not sanitary for this bird to be flying around. I am probably going to get salmonella from this shit, but I don't care. It's so much better than kibble. <laughs> Ashley, you're, you're, you're noticing Maybe. that. You're also yeah. noticing my character. Like every other bite, I feed to the lizard and we're like eating off the same fork. Like I take some potatoes and I eat it. I take some eggs and I give it to the lizard. I I go to say something... And, and you see me start to say something, and then I just, I just, I just deflate, and I'm just like, "There's no point. It's, it's. If you're getting salmonella, you're getting it now." The whole time, like I'm eating, like, but I'm not even looking at my food while I eat. It's like spoon to bowl to mouth with no eye contact because the whole time I'm staring down the the bird, the cockatiel, just like wanting to eat it, like. <laughs> Just like thinking of all the different ways I could get. Um, as as you're looking, as your guys are kind of looking at this bird, uh, Rico, it goes, Rah! Rico, where's Rico? Rah! You're Rico. No, no, honey. And then Gina perks up. She goes, No, no, he it he just loves Rico. He just wants to know where the other Rico is upstairs. Rico. He's playing that damn trumpet. Can't you hear? <laughs> so yeah, yeah I'm, as, surprised, as a, I'm surprised your Rico can't make the same music that the other Rico make. I I hear it, and it gets stuck in my fucking head all day, every day. And this bird that repeats just nonsense, you know. Rico, and it does like the little whistle thing where it imitates the trumpet, but in like a bird whistle, like. Yeah. Some intelligent friends. And he, you can I eat the bird? No, we don't eat friends. And P, I'll get. I'll leave this decision up to you. If you say I can eat the bird, I'll eat the bird right here, right now. Ah, <sighs> no. It's fine, but if Gina doesn't start paying me extra eddies for 
all of her friends staying here, which is past the 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 uh, uh, the limit of uh, house guests. <laughs> um. Then yeah, I, I'll give the go ahead. Maybe I can uh, buy it. Maybe you can repossess the. Bird. I can buy the bird off of you, uh, and then I'm free to do with the bird what I wish. NP, do you really think it's that fair? You don't charge the Andersons uh, five ways or five times rent. Why are you charging me extra just for having my, my roommates in here? Oh, see, you don't know what you don't know. And let's just keep it that way, okay? So what I say goes... And I say you need to start paying up. I wish I could, could say and tell you something else, but that's just how it goes. Now, if you want to make this more, more difficult, then we can make it more difficult. Pointy, who cares? Um, she's letting us eat her food. Out of the goodness of her heart, not doing any harm. Like, look, look around. This is not like the Taj Mahal or whatever important buildings, cool, cool buildings exist. You, you run a slum, man. Get over yourself. I wish I could. I say like mouth full of eggs. Yeah. I wish I could. As you guys are having this conversation you do hear gunshots. Now, this is pretty normal being so close to the combat zone to hear gunshots. What's unique about this is that you hear it in the hallway, just down the, the hall. Uh, no pointer. Specifically, you recognize the gunshots coming from pretty close to where your room is, your apartment. I'll mark on the map, actually, as you can oh, see kind great. of like where the gunshots are coming from. I... I dash out to the hall. Cool. And, as uh, you dash out. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, as you dash out, what you notice is that um, you see, uh, obviously, like, smoke uh, er uh, kind of, like, coming up from, like, this point right here. And you quickly see a door, this door right here that I'm pinging, uh, on the left, on your left down here. Uh, it quickly shuts, and you see... Um, who you recognize as uh, Grant Juno, uh, or better known as his handle as Royal. He is uh, your solo that you actually employ here to help keep the peace. While Rex, uh, your fixer among the place, kind of sends out bribes to kind of like talk down booster gangs. If any of them get full of themselves and still try to attack the place, Royal is the guy who, uh, let's just say, takes care of business. So you can see that clearly he's he's shot the ground in front of his apartment complex and has come out to kind of investigate and like has like a hand on his on his forehead. All right, I make my way down. Um, would you say his name is Royal? Royal's Royal. his handle. Do you mind, mind telling me what happened, Royal? Oh, uh... I'm sorry, NP. I didn't mean to make any noise. Um, he still has his gun in his hand. Like, it's still, like, kind of fresh. Had smoke coming out of it. He just has it kind of at his side. He's just like, those fucking Andersons, man. I keep telling them they gotta stop playing pranks on me. I don't do that kind of shit. What are you talking about? What kind of pranks are they pulling on you look i got a knock i look out the door nothing there i open and then boom they set up one of those hologram shits that fucking scares the living shit out of me i shoot it and i accidentally shoot the floor so i'm sorry about that but can you tell them to lay the fuck off me mm. yeah i'll talk to them we, you know, 
We don't need you out here shooting any kids or anything. So calm down. I don't want to either. I'm, I just, you know what? I don't want to hurt these kids either. I don't want to accidentally put a bullet in them, a hole, just because they want to see how how much how big of a sound their whoopee cushion can make when I sit down. I ain't fucking with that. I get it. I get it. All right. Well, holster the weapon. Do you know? Clean it out real good. Make sure it's ready for when you really need it. I'll take care of this. All right. And he goes back inside of his apartment, um, which you notice, this is specifically something that he installed. Um, Royal's always been a little bit jumpy. He doesn't really, like, let anybody stand behind him, and he's always scanning a room when he goes into it. But specifically, too, his apartment has a, like, a, a steel shut door that locks behind him, that he, like, locks. So it's it's way more sturdy than the normal doors you have on there. He personally installed that himself, so... Okay. Seems kind of like a tweaker. Like he, like he, it's like a meth or something, you know, or some whatever the, whatever the cyber designer drug. Is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Um, you know, everybody, everybody needs something to get by. So. <laughs> it, it, yeah, just a little casual methamphetamine, just a little casual. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, what's it called? The uh, the inhale it. Yeah. Um. So obviously, you know, this is Royal's uh door right here. Um. The one that you saw shut as you kind of peeked out to kind of check on uh and like run out here. That's actually the Andersons' place. That that shut quickly as you kind of came out. So. Um. It's been a hot minute since the uh. Gunshot happened, Gunshot. and I, uh, you know, there hasn't been more, so I kind of, I kind of sit up. I imagine I've finished eating, and, you know, I say, thank you, Gina. Food was delicious, per usual. It's always nice to not eat kibble. I'm going to make sure that nobody requires attention or is bleeding out. I'll be back shortly. Sounds good. And I'm going to go with her in case some does need to be put down. <laughs> um, I I come out into the hallway and I go, yo, MP. Somebody bleeding out. I heard gunshots. You need me. MP's taking a um Do they have they have like kind of uh do they do more of a vape type thing at this point, or do they have any any sort of like cigarette situation going on here? Definitely cigarettes. Oh, uh, yeah, cigarettes common... are very much. A... It still is yeah. very like a a classic kind of cigarettes type situation. Still. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I would yeah. also say like the main how you mainly take like designer drugs and like other drugs too is by like an air hypo which kind of just like yeah. puffs it into your face like it's like yeah. an inhaler yeah yes um yeah so like an asthma inhaler basically yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry it's just funny to ah i'm just gonna do meth yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah, I, I, MP takes you know kind of a long drag and just like just like uh, brushes you know um, waves waves off uh, dock ice, um, you know, kind of as if he's he's got it under control. Um, I we're gonna go hang out with the show. animals then. Uh, you know that shit's bad for your lungs, though. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, if we need to get them replaced or upgraded, yeah, we'll just call upon Daddy Arasaka, huh? Yeah, if you've got the humanity to lose. <laughs> and I kind of walk away. Uh, 
can't lose much if you didn't have much to start with. Kind of like mutters as you like walk away. Um, yeah. <laughs> to the point where like you probably didn't hear it, but um, he doesn't mind if you did at the same time. Yeah. Um, Skull just goes, what? <laughs> Nobody's saying you can go eat. I didn't hear it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I go back in to like finish whatever food is, you know. When when there. Skull walks in to like finish whatever food, he sees you halfway through like scooping all of the leftovers everybody left onto their own plate uh and all of the other plate other all of the other plates are empty you his his commandeered the the leftovers um, of all of the other food didn't skull your parents just, teach you social skills skull skull just like kind of just stares down at you and just like slowly reaches for the guns and pulls them out and just points them at you and is like as you as you're slowly reaching for your gun you will specifically put food back onto skull's plate and only skull's plate <laughs> okay and skull holsters his weapon and just goes down and sits and goes thank you <laughs> is it think you or think you both <laughs> <laughs> Think uh, you, you. So, uh, <laughs> what was that all about? I don't know. Nobody's dying, though. Stupid stuff. <laughs> okay. And then I, nope, I pick up, thing. I pick up my plate, still eating, and I lean out the door, like plate, like eating, and I look down and I, I shout out, "Pointy, is that all good? Are you okay?" It's not my name. <laughs> Unless you're just talking about <laughs> her. And then I just point to, uh, like, start slowly uh, uh, detracting. Like, my, <laughs> my the katana comes out of my hand. <laughs> like, and I'm just pointing to that. Um... And with that cyber arm, I kind of, you know, I, 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 uh, I pound on the door, um, yeah, just to, so it's louder, and um, yeah. definitely with less patience. On the, the Andersons, you, you door? hear from. Hmm. You hear from the other side of the door. It's unlocked. Um. All right, and well, and heavy I... rock is also playing inside the 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 apartment. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I kind of forcefully like open it up. Like I don't break it. Right. But it, it's uh, like yeah. you fling it open, like hits. Yeah. We're we're right. we're we're meaning business now. We're gonna we're gonna shut this place down. I shout, you have to give Perfect. 24 hours notice before you do that. <laughs> so as you kind of bust into this door, um, you, you put, you like bust into the door and you notice it's actually, uh, it sh shocks you a bit as you kind of <laughs> go into it and you take, uh, two sh like electrical damage as it just kind of shoots through your body real quick. Um, and shocks you. What shocks me? Uh, the door. So it's electrified. The door is electrified. Should have given yeah, just you 24 like a hours notice. <laughs> and as you kind of come inside, Molly, uh, oh, is standing right. right here. There's Molly Anderson. And she sees you get jocked, uh, shocked, and she goes, oh my god, god damn it, Marco, Andy! And she yells at, uh, these two over here. So let me kind of describe the Andersons a little bit so you kind of have a better understanding. Molly, who's the one who greets you, you recognize her. She's kind of like um, uh, the matriarch of the group. Uh, she's 25 years old, and she's kind of taking everybody here in, uh, kind of under her wing. Um, she uh, She's Molly Anderson. The two, two boys she just yelled at, they're the youngest. They're the twins. They're called Marco and Andy. Um, they have a reputation of kind of doing all the, the pranks that almost get them shot by, by Royal. <laughs> um, there's also, uh, let's see, Judy, 
Anderson, who is the tall one, and then Maurice Anderson, who is the short one. Um, and they're they're all known as the Andersons. Now, uh, they don't all look related, which you know isn't isn't uh, that uh, isn't that uncommon for most families here in cyberpunk and stuff like that. Uh, but you you know you know because you've seen them and you can see all of their their fingers clearly. They have tattooed on their fingers Anderson. Um, so each of them have that those Anderson uh, tattoos uh, across their fingers. And um, as as you kind of walk in, Molly like quickly comes over to you, kind of pats you, and kind of looks and is inspecting you and being like, "I'm so sorry." Uh, they 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 really shouldn't have. Uh, I'm telling them they're gonna get shot by Royal for all these stupid ass pranks. NP, I'm sorry. Look, um, how how badly are you hurt? Well, you could say it was definitely a shock. <laughs> 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 All right, that's all well and good, MP, but come, well, come on, don't joke like that. Nobody got shot, so that's that's great, because somebody could have got Not shot. Not yet. Today. If you I'm don't you, if you know how to raise two, two 15-year-old boys, you let me know. Well, that's not, that's not my responsibility. And frankly, yeah. if you care about their safety and well-being... You'll Which make sure that they stop this today. Because tomorrow, instead of shooting the ground, he could have shot, you know, um, Royal could have shot both of your kids. Could be tomorrow. Could be the next day. You know, there is uh, this man, it does not mean, you know, he he means business. He, he he's I, someone that you don't you don't screw around with, and conveniently, I, that's what your children like to do is screw around. Uh, you hear uh Andy Anderson from the table because they're like playing cards or something like that on the table. Uh, you hear Andy just kind of perk up, and he goes, yeah, the business of being a jumpy shit. <laughs> and then, like, Marco kind of chuckles, like, <laughs> like, stupidly. <laughs> Stupid kind of, like, mouth-breathing chuckle. Okay. <clears throat> Look, Molly turns to you. Look, MP. I'll discipline them, okay? You hear that, boys? I'm gonna discipline you. I'll discipline them. Just, you know what? Why don't you... Why don't you go down to Doc Carver at the end of the hall? Whatever he charges you, I'll, I'll pay for it, okay? I'm taking out their allowance, you hear that? And you hear both Marco and Andy groan in distaste as, as they hear hear that, but Molly uh, turns back to him and goes, okay, just go, look, I I'll, I'll discipline them. Go pat yourself up at uh, Doc Carver, okay? I'll pay for it. <sighs> All right. And, you know, just so you, you are reminded about, you know, your place here. I'm going to need, I'm going to need twice as much money as the last month from you as well. You're doubling the rent? I'm doubling the rent. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the big uh, idea? Is it is it because we we all live here? I mean, you don't charge Miss Gina down the down the hall for all her oh, roommates. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, we I'm are sorry. now. We're we're playing cyberpunk. You're her for playing her landlord stealing. <laughs> <laughs> Christian's playing fucking landlord simulator right now. And you gotta know that's not fair. The show so so close to the end of the month, you can't just charge me double like that. I don't know. Well, you know what what's not fair is Royal having to worry about these two little shits coming out to scare him. I told you. He's got you. PTSD. He he has I know, issues. No, he does. 
and he's a Look. very good killer. So I'm gonna discipline them, okay? Don't worry. I need more than that. And the only thing that talks in this town is Eddie's. You've been Marco, warned. You have a notice. It, she just kind of looks looks down and says, I'm still paying for your fucking t treatment, but I don't know where I'm going to get this money, okay, MP? Really screwing me right now. and Not the kind of fucking I like. Well, I hope you get used to it. Figure out how to like it. <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a wonderful day. With that, I'm out of here. <laughs> um, you know Dr. With... Carver's office is down here across the hall from Gene. Oh yeah, but... definitely... Definitely didn't forget that. As as uh, we kind of pass each other in the hallway, because I uh, and I, I come and and talk to NP, and I'm like, I uh, heard a little girl screaming just a little bit ago. What, what happened this time? Uh. Well, I hope you're not referring to me. I don't know. Were you screaming like a little girl? Well, I don't think so. Did I scream like a little girl? Did you get shocked by that door again? It did startle me. But I don't rem I don't recall screaming like a girl. That wasn't me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we got some tricksters in the building. And, oh, uh, you should know better. You know they have the jolt on the door. You should know better. They're just kids, anyways. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know anything about being a kid. <sighs> Everybody was one once. Now... Well, how was the food? Was it better good? Than, better than kibble. It was great. That's good. Oh, it was mid. Crashed. <laughs> Shut up, Skull. Skull, did you say that while Gina's in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's still in the fucking. She she up. turns to, yeah, she turns to to puddles her tortoise and goes, "Don't worry, it, it's not your cooking. He's, yeah, it, I loved your cooking." She says that what? to the tortoise. What? Yeah, she said that to the tortoise. You're telling me a turtle fried this rice? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, you. <laughs> you tell, uh, tell Gina I'm going to the doctor. I can see if there's any open appointments for her condition. <laughs> Why are you going to the doctor? Well, I'm you know a little I'm hurt. a doctor. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, well, fuck you too. <laughs> I. He wants someone that's not gonna botch the job like me. Okay, you just, just did otherwise. Just to let you know, you guys all know who Dr. Carver is. Um, his actual name is Dr. George Carver, but he is your local Ripper Doc. Um, to those familiar with cyberpunk, you might be familiar with the term, but basically he, uh, he has, um, it, kind of like, uh, he's an expert at installing cyberware, at patching people up. He's kind of like an on-the-streets doctor, uh, great at healing people and getting people back in. In fact, he's lined his room with sound-dampening foam. Uh, and, and has, like, a, a, a surgery table in there just so the screaming from his patients don't, doesn't, like, go through and everything. He works normally as a trauma team at night, uh, but during the day he'll sometimes see his other patients, shall we say. So, he is, he is an expert in his field. He doesn't give people drugs before the operation? 
sometimes if they can afford it. Yeah, you can't always it's afford that true. shit. Come on, drugs are drugs are expensive. Screams are cheap. <laughs> Screams are free. He made me pay for the twig <laughs> I had to bite down on. Say so he made you pay uh, for that dowel? Yeah. Jesus. Well, it's unsanitary. Otherwise, do you want to pay for the law service? Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to use one. I had to get a new one. Oh, yeah, right. you Brits, bring your own BYOT, baby. Bring your own towel. Uh, Don't forget. Don't forget to bring one. Yeah. So, Doc Ice. Okay, I need a little bit more hands-on, professional Ripper Doc treatment that you cannot provide, okay? You got shocked by a door. Yeah? Well, I've got some prime materials going on in here. Yeah, whatever. And um, they're, they're insured by good bit to make sure that everything is working properly. You know Doc Ripper doesn't take insurance. percent efficiency. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave that to me. You gotta go through a corpo hospital to get insurance accepted. You know this. Idiot. I got it. Whatever. You know, and if it costs a little bit too much for my liking, I'll raise your rent too. How about that? Why? <laughs> Because you're arguing with me. <laughs> you need I a cyber therapist. I appreciate your help. Okay. No, you don't. Joke. No, you don't appreciate joke. my help. It was a joke. You appreciated my help. You'd come to see me instead of Doc Carver. I t you. <sighs> yeah. Um. As a side note. My uh, my my operation space is not state of the art. It is a little bit outdated, but it is comfortable to me. So I imagine Doc Carver is like state of the art street doc. Well, it sounds All like right. Carver is more of like a cybernetics doctor. You're like a emergency yes. response, like that's what I'm trying. Stem the bleeding like type that. of doctor. Yeah. He's too yeah. yeah. She won't swallow her pride. <laughs> like, he's definitely, like, uh, like in the past, he's made deals with you, uh, Null Pointer, NP, to, like, if you've damaged, like, some of your, your cyber gear, he's he's repaired it for free for discounts on the rent. Like, he's he's negotiated deals with like that with you. Yeah, I figure we kind of have a deal set up yeah. here. Um. Yeah. Kind of have all our resources, um, everything we need, uh, set up here in the in the apartment complex. Um, yeah. So let's. Uh, so yeah. So I, I kind of. Uh, I assume the door is not open here. And uh, nope. I'll knock on the door and uh, ask for the Ripper Doc. Dr. Yeah. Carver. Um, you hear uh you hear him kind of like awaken suddenly in his sleep, go, huh? huh? Oh, uh, hold on, I'm coming. Uh you know that he normally works night shifts. So uh, coming to him during the day, he's mostly sleeping. So he he wakes up and he kind of answers the door for you and he goes, Oh hey, how's it going? Uh no pointer. What's going on? I need a quick fix me up if you can if you can help me out, Doc. Oh, sure. Come on. Come sit on my table. I appreciate it. Uh nothing too crazy, but just a little shocked and uh uh feeling a little bit out of it. You know, not uh not a hundred percent. I'm I'm, well, I'm seeing, let me just... I'm seeing some lines, you know, some 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 jumpiness. Uh all right, well, yeah, as let you, me run as some you, diagnostics. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Any, any, like plugs into your system. Nothing that you like. You've never not done before. He kind of like plugs you into his system, and he starts like running some diagnostics. He takes a, like a light, and he like has your eyes kind of like follow it and stuff like that. 
He goes, yeah, looks like your circuits are good, cleared. Looks like a lot of the uh, absorbers did their their function and everything, so you're you're looking fine. But you got you got a little bit of of a cut here, and he pulls out um, something you recognize as a speed heel. Uh, a speed heel is located on page one fifty. Um, essentially, what it does is it's kind of like a health potion <laughs> for a uh, a crude uh, comparison. Uh, but basically, you take it, and uh, if you're not in the mortally wound status immediately, it immediately heals um, HP equal to your body plus your will combined together. Um, and you can only take one per day, but he but he hands that to you, and he goes, "Hey." Um, here's this. This will obviously heal what uh, you got going on, but if you want to save it for later when you're really hurting, doesn't matter to me. So, that should be good. Um, we knocking off rent like we do usually? Yeah, what... what how, how many Eddies you, would you say that, that that would set you back? Hmm. Not too much. Um... Let me get the price of that. 200? 200 eddies, I would say. Okay. I think we can make that work. Cool. Perfect. I appreciate um, it, Doc. No problem. Everything good? How'd you... How'd you... Uh, it doesn't look that bad. Not from your usual scrapes. How'd you get this? Well, um... Uh, you're... You're, uh neighbors two doors down um are are uh, causing a little bit of trouble and uh booby trapping the their apartment and um yeah i was uh i got a little bit of a shock a system mm -hmm. shock you could say huh. well good thing it didn't hurt you that bad <laughs> Hopefully those kids knock it off. Who knows what can happen? Oh, I've got an idea for them. I think they'll... Uh, I think I'll set them straight. <laughs> he smirks uh, a you? little bit. Did I tell you I already pulled one bullet out of that Marco kid's thigh? <laughs> when was this? Hmm, last week, I think. Uh, probably about 3 a.m. on Saturday. Right around then. Do you know? Do you know where this happened? Did he say much about it? I didn't ask. You know, didn't pry. But uh, you know what they get up to? Those Andersons, am I right? Their reputation precedes them. Yeah, they're gonna be dead before they can call themselves an adult. <laughs> uh, well, um, and at this moment. Uh, you did hear that, uh, Rico's trumpet playing from upstairs stopped just a little bit ago, and he kind of rounds this, like, corner around here. And, he, uh, he might see, like, um, Doc Ice and you, if you guys are standing in the hallway. Are you guys still standing in the hallway? Sure. Mm-hmm, sure. Okay, cool. So, he approaches you guys and goes, hey! Yo, where's, uh, NP? Uh, gotta talk to him about something. I point. Be seeing another doctor, like little shit. There's no such thing as loyalty in this goddamn world anymore. Ah, Doc Ice, and he like puts an arm on you. I'm not sure if you allow this, but he's gonna. He's he tries to be real friendly all the time, so he puts. He tries to put a hand on his on your shoulder. Kind of freeze, like you know what they say to do when a dog is attacking you. They say to be a tree, like bring your arms to your side and stay still. I kind of just like. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't shove it off, but like I am not getting all yeah. chummy either. Rico goes, Doc Ice, you gotta relax. Different docs for different types of issues. You know what I mean? I could have handled this issue, but whatever. You come to me, Rico. You know, right? I know. Don't you worry, Doc Ice. I wouldn't go to anybody else. You're not just saying that, right? No, no, Doc Ice! Who patches me up? Remember this scar right here? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> See? If I, if I don't come to you, how am I going to get these beautiful beauty marks? It's true. It's true. 
Um, hey, where's your bro skull out, by the way? Did he get any more beauty marks yet? He's still over at Gina's trying to eat that damn cockatiel. Ah, yeah, her roommate's leftovers, right. <laughs> no, he's trying to eat Did the tell you what? Did I ever tell you what, uh, why she named that bird? Or who she named that bird after? She named it after you, Rico. Hey, hey. I don't kiss and tell, you know what I mean? <laughs> go, go, go deal with your business. He's, he's in with the Ripper. Uh, he goes, okay. He just kind of pushes open the door and just yells from the hallway. He doesn't even, like, go in. He just kind of opens, like, Dr. Carver's room and goes, Hey, yo, MP! <sighs> For being an introvert, people sure do seem to like me. People don't <laughs> like you. You're the slumlord. They have You're to endearing. talk to you. We like you. We're, yeah, all, we're all trying like to him. prove. We're all trying to prove our worth to you. You're the you're the landlord. We gotta you prove something to you. You just in so he doesn't raise your rent. Hey, you don't say the quiet part out loud. What you doing to me, Doc? Come on. Yeah, what what do you want, Rico? Look, I'm upstairs playing. You know, like I normally do. And oh I yeah, notice. we can. We always hear you. <laughs> Well, you know my normal routine. I usually have my cup of coffee, I look out the window. Guess what I see this morning? I see this black car outside. Normally, not a big deal, you know. Just people don't usually, you know, park that kind of a nice of a vehicle outside. So I go, start playing my trumpet. You know, this was several hours ago, right? Well, I peek out just a few moments ago. That car's still there. Got three people outside, all in suits, looking nice, you know what I mean? And he's working on something. I couldn't see. But, I don't know, I thought I'd let you know. What do you mean, working on something? Working on the car? Tell. He's got some kind of big wooden thing out there. He's, he's doing stuff. I don't know, these guys are looking too nice. They're too nice to be looking in this kind of area for this long, you know what I mean? They're doing woodworking? I don't know, in he's suits? got something out there. I, I didn't look! I, look! MP, I didn't see everything. I don't have the good of eyesight anymore. Okay. Well, these eyes are old natural. Uh, thanks, I guess. Um, yeah, what? Well, I'll, I'll take a look into it, maybe. Okay. Um, when I went into the Anderson's room, um, yeah. did I, the, you said there was, um, uh, music playing and everything. Um, heavy rock. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what was that coming from? Did I, what did I notice about the room and, uh, you know, and the tech and everything? Was there any, um, was that all, um, Pretty analog, older stuff, or was this, you know, newer stuff that's connected to the net? Yeah, it's definitely not connected to the net. It looked like it was playing off of kind of like a like a speaker system that maybe they have like hooked up to like a central audio system. So they probably have just like a like an audio system that maybe they can like put music on or MP3s or something like that, and then it just plays throughout their 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 room. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. All right. Uh, I'm. Do, does the, the the trumpet player guy walk away after like delivering his message? Like, does he go back to his room? Yep, absolutely. He he says he notices that car and people out there, and then he goes back up to the fourth floor, and now starts playing on his guitar. After he like walks past us, I lean over to. Ashley's character, Doc Ice, and is like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was he trying to say he fucked that bird? No, no. I think he was trying to say he fucked Gina. That makes more sense. No, I so she I named the bird after him. It does seem sleazy. No, I, I think he fucked both. 
I don't think he fucked the bird skull. I I, I think he fucked both. I think How would he? They had a threesome. It was a it was a inter species I it's a small apartment. They had to at least been watching, right? Well oh it does God. explain her affinity for animals. We should just go deal with whatever's going on outside. All right, fine. Hey, I don't like the yuck people's yum, but that seems a little bit crossing the line, don't you think? This isn't yum yucking. This is I'm this pretty down. This is putting down a thread. Curious. All right, they're probably going outside to check out the thing now. Perfect. All but right. Right so, before we do, though, like we're walking down, I just want to like, is it like, yep. pointy? And I look him right in the eyes. I just want to say, I got that system shock reference you made earlier. And then we keep going. Oh, uh, you're you're one for the classics, too. Huh? I, I like to dabble in you know, what they, oh, uh, what. They used to call them video games. I don't know. They still may. And I don't know if they still do call. I think there's still video games. There's got to still be video games, right? Like, it's not just all the brain dances or whatever. Yeah. There's yeah, definitely so. got to be video games. DM, is the there classic. a window for me to look outside to... from up here? Absolutely. Absolutely, you can look outside. So, because you're trying to see, like, across the street and what's kind of going on, I'm going to have you do a perception roll. So, Sounds yeah. This, it's, for the, it, this is going to be our... Yeah. For the record, I have a cyber eye with teleoptics, and I can see in detail up to 800 meters away. Okay. Oh, then you don't need to make a roll. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll go ahead. I'm going to drag you guys onto the street corner right here. And I'll describe the scene. And this is kind of like Doc Ice. This is what you see from like afar. What mm -hmm. appears to be is that there's definitely like um, a pair. It looks like two private security officers. Though That's what these guys in front are in Militech uniforms. And they're guarding a man who's right here that appears to be sketching on an Etzel. Or an easel, sorry, on an easel. Um, and one of the interesting things you notice, like, on his, on his shoulders are two, a set of mounted cameras on each of his shoulders, kind of, like, looking around. I relay this information to the rest of the crew. Like, it's kind of weird. It's just some dude doing art, but he's got bodyguards. I I don't know. Is there some sort of like history or insight check? Like, would I know if this is some sort of celebrity? Is that Banksy? Is that Banksy? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. You're checking if it's Banksy? Yes. <laughs> no. I was seeing if there'd be a specific check, like a history or something to kind of know. Uh, there's Maybe, the would local that be an education skill. Uh, right. So we could do the local expert. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Cool. Is that under yeah. what is that under education? Education skills. Yeah. yeah. It's in the center column. Yeah, there's yep, a yep, yep. local expert, and then there's like uh, three different things. Like we all start with some knowledge about our home, like our neighborhood. Yeah. So like you could check if like. This is someone you recognize or like a local artist or something. Yes. Can I make that check? Yes, absolutely. Now, it's supposed to be the level of stat that you have, plus uh, which should be whatever your uh, intelligence is for this, plus whatever your, your level in the skill is, and then you roll a d10 and add those two together. Mm. And I, okay. I'm going to say, let's see. Um... Dalton, do you know this is going to be an everyday task? So I'm using the chart from page 129 in the core rulebook to set the difficulty value, and that value is a 13. So the feat is something most people can do without a lot of special training. So. Nine. 
Nine in total? Yeah. Okay. Well, unfortunately, you fail to identify if this person is somebody who, like you're saying, if they were like a specific celebrity or anything like that. I don't <laughs> keep up with the local art scene. Yeah. Hmm. And so, yeah, just, I mean, just for everybody's reference at home, a skill check works basically just by adding, just like in D&D, &D, there's a core characteristic that you have that relates to each of the skills that are there. So you add that core characteristic plus the skill level, because this is like a level-based tabletop RPG. Whatever level you have in that skill, you add those two numbers together. On the character sheet, it's known as like your base, so is what the third column it has kind of on there. You roll a d10, you add all that together, and that's kind of the system that it's based on. You can think of it kind of like instead of a d20, this system uses a d10 for most rolls. So, but, um, sorry, continue on, guys. Um, so... Can I see what he's drawing on the easel? No, I, it, it's, uh, I should have, I should have put it differently. Basically, he has the easel facing away from you guys. So you're not able to see onto it. I ask uh, so that guys uh, what she sees. I, I, I'm assuming we're, we're still um, in the building, you know, next to her. Some artist with bodyguards. I don't know. He's got an easel. I don't recognize him though. He's looking this way. Is he looking? Is he sketching our building, or maybe like looking at our building? He does. His cameras do seem to be kind of like looking in your direction. I think so. He's looking at our building, at least. Why would he be sketching it if he's got cameras looking at? It? People like to do art. Yeah, but... Rich people, at least. This doesn't just seem like art. Eh, you're the Should slumlord. I... Go ask him about it. Should I shoot him? <laughs> or I could walk over with, uh, with Frankie here, and I pull out my big club. And I could, I could, I could introduce him to Frankie... So we can get this figured out real quick. Well, it might not be the could get a little in over our heads. It'd be good to have a little bit more information about these these uh, armor, you know, armed guards and everything. Uh, so this is my question, just like kind of yeah outside the game. Um. How is so being a net runner? How can I know, like, okay, what's connected to the net and where I would have to connect in to be able to access that thing that I want to that is connected to the net? If you know, and how I found find that all out, right? Because this guy has cameras on his shoulders, but he is kind of in a mobile position, not really like in a building, um, and it's attached to him. So could I somehow get access to that, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Excellent question. Uh, let me bring up. So there are a ton of net actions that you can do. So oh. at, uh, to people at home who may not know, essentially... And when you are a net runner, you kind of get um, you get your whole kind of like there's a subsystem within Cyberpunk that you kind of get access to, which is really cool. It, it all relates to kind of hacking into different systems and stuff like that. Um, they can hack to kind of like the net, but nets are more like building focused and less about like how we understand it, where it's like widely connected across locations. Um, so like for the most part is when you hack, want to hack into something, it has, it's usually whatever building you're kind of in. So when we break down into Netrunner actions, you have what's called meet actions, which are stuff you do in the real world and net actions, which are stuff you do within kind of like this vert AR, this, uh, this, uh, 
AR kind of reality type thing. Um, and one of the things you would normally do is um, there is a scanner interface ability, which is a Netrunner thing. So this is a meet action to find the um, to find out in meet space, which is like real the real world location of access points to any net architectures in an area. So essentially, you make a check using your 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 interface plus one d ten versus a dv, uh, which is difficulty value, and depending on how how well you do, you get uh, the locations of different stuff. But let me go ahead and bring you guys back to the apartments real quick because instead of making that scanner ability check, which you would normally do in any kind of location that you're not familiar with, um, because you live here and you're constantly like jacking into mm -hmm. locations and stuff, I'm going to say you already know you don't have to make that scanner ability. You already can know the, the location points in the apartment complex. And that is just uh, either side of the hallway. There is a mm -hmm. fire alarm over here that you can jack into. And there's also like a, a point over here, which is right next to like the elevator controls and stuff like that. So um, it's either access point gets you access to the whole net architecture. It's just those are two points you can enter into. Um, there's one, there's a couple on each floor, and there's an access point on the roof as well. So um, that's what you have kind of access to. Um, you know though that when you hack, when you when you jack in to this net architecture, it's only going to be stuff within the building, and you know yeah. that there are no cameras connected to this system. Just right. so you know. So yeah, so it, this that is a good good explanation. Um, yeah, this wouldn't help me out uh, to do this um, to jack in and all of that um, right now, but um, for the future. Yeah. Yep. Chris, were you trying to see if like the guys outside had some sort of like active net connection or network or something? Is that why you were asking? Yeah, yeah, I was because because they're not in a building. I didn't know if there were any rules. Yeah, like so that inter that worked around that. Yeah, Spencer. So he wasn't necessarily asking about connections inside the building. More wondering about the dudes outside and what they had. But it uh, is no, mostly made they, building they, focused, right? They, yeah, they would have to have access to one of these access points, so they wouldn't be able to hack in from across the street. Right, and vice versa, because there is no connection to them, because it is building-focused, essentially. Yep, that's right. So, yeah. All right. Very cool. Um... So, <laughs> who who is our good the uh you know our charismatic face of of our party here? Because I definitely am not. <laughs> oh no, you is probably the most charismatic, even though he's the weirdo. They're the weirdo. You want me to go outside talk to him? Yeah, you're good with talking to people. Like, I I know it's virtually speaking but i'll probably you know, end up killing them so you know yeah you, i know that's why we didn't yeah. volunteer you yeah. Yeah. okay okay that, okay what are you gonna pay me <laughs> um how about we we figure out what what's going on what they want first and then we can talk about that just ask me to do stuff for free Oh no, nothing's free. Everything costs. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what I'll do it for. Free. I'll do it for free if I don't have to guarantee that I won't kill them. See, even, Pay even option A or B, with, then pay me to do it. Even or Skull you can, has or you cost. can send Scully. It's up to you. 
It's what skull, you, what, not what skull. Do you want? What you do get you it want? right. Because I could never compare to the great Dana Scully of X Files, the great <laughs> 90s hit. <laughs> nice. Um. You get that right. You drill that in your head. And like, I'm pointing a gun. <laughs> like. All right, fine. I'll think up a different cute nickname for you. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, wh what do you want? You. What do you, you Money. want? Money. I, I, <laughs> this is a negotiation. <laughs> how, how much i i don't got give me a number I man i don't have a lot to my name oh give me a number give me give what you are you talking number? about i just gave you ten thousand eddies this morning for for right <laughs> give him a rent discount you don't have money uh, all right skull <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, how about you? you can just take care of it. I'm sure I'll be fine. Wee! <laughs> I just start running towards the Skull, door. like, crashes out the window. Yeah, I do that. That's bad. Uh, I was, you're on I the was, third floor. I was running. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I don't, I don't, I don't have, like, cyber mods, so I, I do go oh. do towards the stairs. Wait, oh, wait, no. Then I remember... The stairs are this way. So I run back and I... Those are stairs, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. At the, at okay. the end, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, I go out and... Uh, I go towards them, I guess. Okay, perfect. Let's switch over to... Boom, boom. So go ahead and place yourself on the map right about here. And can you describe to me kind of like how you're approaching these guys? Uh, you said right about, can you re-ping? Sorry, my thing. Yeah, where the, the crosswalk is, basically. Oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. okay. The other side. Why does it not want to bring me in? There we go. Oh, we got to be bigger than that. <laughs> you're so small. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make you the same size. Oh, we got to be bigger than that. How do I... <laughs> I How think I Spencer might it? have to resize you. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. Oh, God. Let's, and boom. There we are. Cool. I was I was so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So. Um, and it's just Skull. I... Nobody else is joining him? Uh, I'll be, like, inside but watching. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. I think this will but be like funny. like, on floor level, yeah. Yeah, I think this will be Everybody's funny. Everybody's at, so... like, the first floor. Yeah. yeah. Watching it happen from, cool. from a distance where I could intervene if it, things go bad, but this seems oh, like I... an opportunity Sounds for good. comedy. So I will I let definitely it play out. him on the back as, as Skull <laughs> left. Like, you got this, buddy. Yeah. So, so I, uh, you're, you ask how I just walk up? I yep. just walk. I just walk up, like gun in each hand, just going, "Hey!" Not pointing it at them, like kind of just shooting it at the sky. But like, I'm kind of <laughs> yeah. like dance walking. You know how like in Futurama, like Bender walks when he's happy. He's got that kind of like bounce step. I've got like a bounce in my yeah. step. You know, like like, yep. hey, hey, what's up, guys? Okay. Yep. 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 Cool. 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 Do cool. you have? <laughs> Are you so? <laughs> are your guns drawn like as you're bouncing? Or yeah, oh yeah, there, I've got one in each. Just like, hey, what's up? You know, just very, very whimsical. So as as you kind of step forward, um, both of the the like Militech uniformed uh, people kind of like s stop in, oh, like okay. right here in front of the car, and they put out hands, and you see like them kind of like just like hover over where their their pistols are like their guns and they go hey don't get any closer move along mm, about that so so 
and I kind of, I kind of like look back at, um, I kind of look back at, at Alaska and I go, Alaska, what am I supposed to be asking them again? I was too busy focused on food. What what are they doing? Why are they reporting, doing? Wait. Why are they got, here? <laughs> oh, okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, what do you guys want? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I'll allow you to use a social skill in this in this conversation. Do you want to do you can do <laughs> <laughs> what social skill would you like to use in this situation? If you use bribery, you would have to offer actual money to try to bribe them into asking what they're doing. If you use conversation, you just start chatting with them to try to like, you know, get information about like what's going on and everything. Um, if you try, well, you wouldn't be able to do interrogation. You would probably have to have like them like, un uh, like uh, get something with them. Oh, that's uh, the one I'm good at. Persuasion, uh, I think, might work. Um, let's see here. There's no intimidation, it looks like. Um, yeah. Or else I would have said, like, you could have probably done some intimidation as well. That would probably so, be, like, I, a flavor of persuasion. Yeah. Could... Could, um... It be interrogation if I'm pointing my guns at them? Uh... Can I would say I... they would have to be unarmed and not at equal level with you. Okay. If that makes sense. Like tied, yeah. not necessarily tied, like, but like tied to a chair, something like that. Yeah. Okay. I'll use persuasion then. Okay. Great. Which is your uh, cool stat mm -hmm. plus whatever level of persuasion you have. And then you roll d10 and add that all together. So I get plus two plus six. So d10 plus two plus six. What were you going to say, by the way, Ash? Um, I was debating about coming out with with uh, Gall if he was going to start choosing violence right off the bat. Well, but he, he isn't choosing violence right off the bat. So yeah. I am going to continue to watch. No, yeah, I, I, I put my arm out. I said, D Doc, let him cook. <laughs> He's cooking. <laughs> hey, I, I got 15. 15. All right. Good. Perfect. So, um, let's see, what are the, what are the just again? above Sorry. every day, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, so I basically say, look, 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 I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, mer you guys probably recognize me. My name's Skull. I'm out in the combat zones a lot. You guys probably heard about me. Me and my peeps are live around here. You're in our area. I'm just wondering what you're doing. That's all. Yeah. If it, you know. Just, so you just, said you got 15 in total, right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That would have beaten like a difficult check. So yeah, I would say. Uh, so you, okay. So their response is like they they kind of like they have their hands still close to their guns, but they start to kind of like move away and they go, "Look, we're just on business. You should probably clear out of here." Now, when you say clear out of here, you mean like five feet or like 500 feet or like five miles like what kind of business like you about to blow up arasaka tower again or <laughs> are you just like putting a dead body in the truck there's like i can help you you can hire me i do this no no we're sometimes saying, i just do clear. this shit for free because i enjoy killing The one on the left kind of looks at the one on the right just kind of gives them like a like a side eye and the one on the right goes all right, look, listen, when I say clear out of here, I mean probably grab your shit and get out of that building, you hear? Okay, so it was more like 500 feet. Okay, see, that's what I wanted to know. Are you guys blowing up my building? Because I live there. Well, <laughs> might not live there much longer. Yeah, I, I pull out my gun and I shoot him in the head. Super <laughs> threatening way to phrase that. God. I just I, like, I immediately just shoot. Like I go, okay, and just shoot. Like Oh man. Okay. Well I turn to you and I go, God damn it, you you should have let me intervene. Just let him do what he does but, best. Uh, okay. 
Uh, so yeah, so that's probably gonna kick off uh, uh, combat. So let's <laughs> we're gonna stop uh, there and probably pick up next week. So. <laughs> Uh, so we're we're ending with with uh with uh suspense yeah with 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 skull just opening fire on these guys who made a very vague threat a vague threat <laughs> of getting hey, rid of it was clear of, it was clear enough to skull it it, it, <laughs> it crossed the line and with skull mm -hmm. if there's there is no line yep. like if there is even one step that's over the line. Boom. Oh, man. You know? Oh, that's yep, perfect. I agree. You did the right thing. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Uh, so, yeah. So, anyways, that's where we're probably going to end the session today. But we're still going to stay on just for a tiny bit. If you have any questions about Cyberpunk, please leave them as comments right now. We're happy to answer them. Although we are new to playing Cyberpunk, uh, we have started reading and fully read. I've fully read at least the core rulebook and this Jumpstart kit. So um, I've looked up kind of uh, quite a bit of stuff just to kind of get answers and everything. Um, so if you, if you have any questions, please leave them as a comment. Um, in the meantime, uh, yeah. So how's everybody else feeling about Cyberpunk so far? Do you have... Any questions about how things are going? Any clarifications about how some things should work? How's everybody else feeling about Cyberpunk so far? How is um, initiative going to work here? Yeah, so uh, absolutely. We'll cover this at the beginning of next session too, but initiative is going to start out, it's your reflex plus 1d10. So it works very similar to D&D. To, um, where you have you everybody rolls for initiative and then get placed in initiative order that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because I have um, a Sandevistan, which gives me as an action I can give myself plus three to initiative. Um, so I was I was curious on like how that works. Because initiative shouldn't change after it's initially um, figured out, right? Why well, it's or just the, or so roll when you when you when we're figuring out initiative. Yeah, but it takes an action, right? Like, why would it take an action at that point? We're not like. Uh, oh, it takes. I, mean, I might have turn. to find the wording that's why i'm asking because I, I was like well it's kind of weird that it would take an action unless we're for that after that turn then my initiative moves up right like i move up the list or whatever i would say it fact. does it does it move sense. up your initiative when activated as an action yeah so that's what it, it seems like yeah uh, to so me, i would say yeah sorry go ahead spencer i was just gonna gonna say it, it would definitely work it would still add plus three to your initiative so you'd be able to see how initiative works and if that would boost you quick enough to be in front of people christian you ever play yeah. like final fantasy or uh, to me it's like like casting haste yeah, yeah it's kind it of is, it's kind of like that yeah it, it is uh this one specifically is for a minute long so that would tie more into like, oh well, so many turns, right? If if they're so twenty turns whatever. in Cyberpunk, because it's three turns, three seconds a turn, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's twenty turns. That's an insane amount. Yeah, you know? yeah. I like would probably just need to keep track of our initiative numbers that we roll, and when you take your yeah. action to activate mm -hmm. it. You've then added plus three, and you that might move you up in initiative. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something that is, yeah, that'll be that's good to know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And 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 don't worry, we'll get more into kind of like combat next next session as well. But basically, you can think of it as like uh, your turn in combat is one move plus one action. And that might seem confusing because you're just like, wait, how do I do multiple attacks or how do I do this? Um, the cool thing is we briefly discussed like dual wielding last time and rate of fire or ROF in Cyberpunk. 
basically, um, a lot of melee weapons, you get an ROF of, like, two, so you can hit twice. Um, and a lot of pistols have an ROF of two. So a lot of things will either have an ROF of one or two, but sometimes you can have more. And how you can think of that as is dividing it into fractions. So if, if your pistol has a rate of fire of two, you can think of that as it takes your one action and divides it into one half for each. So shoot once is one half and shoot twice is the other half. And that works with anything. So if you have like a melee weapon that gets an ROF2 and a pistol that has an ROF2, you can shoot once with one pistol and then also make an attack with your katana. Because both of those have a one half of two and they're only using one half for each side. Um, so Dan has dual wielding pistols. So basically yeah. he can shoot with one hand and then shoot with the other. And then basically having dual wielding pistols just means that he has more of a magazine to go through before he has to reload. He has yeah. twice the amount of magazines, essentially. Yeah. So, can he they shoot... only take one hand. Yeah. What's the rate of fire on the pistol? Two. Yeah. So, so you get one and one. Like it's a yeah. max of two shots. Yeah. So it's. So he can like... shoot two shots, not four shots, because right. even though he has two pistols that have a exactly. rate of fire of two. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Because it, 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 it'd be the same, like, if I had one if I had one gun, I'd be able to shoot it twice. Or I can shoot the two guns once, because it's a max of two. Okay. It, doesn't, it doesn't go out to four like I originally thought. Yeah. That's good to Like, know. think of it like this, too. Like, if, say, Dan has a pistol that has an ROF of two in one hand, and then the other hand, he's got in a brand new melee weapon. That's like a, a cybernetic or like a cyber tech thing called the pinwheel. And it's just like a pinwheel thing that fl uh, that flies, but it has blades at the end of it. Um, let's say that pinwheel has an ROF of four. Well, his pistol still has an ROF of two. So if he shoots once with his pistol, then it, that uses, he could do yeah, one more pistol action. shoot. Yeah. But if he only shoots one with the pistol, he still has one half of that action left. And he could do two of the pinwheel strikes because it has an ROF of four or one fourth, essentially. So it could be like a pistol shot and then one two type deal. Does that make sense? And that's how they balance the damage based on just the ROF mm -hmm. or the weapon. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. It makes sense, honestly. Yeah. Otherwise, you can get some broken like builds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so. for sure. But Very we'll cool. explain more about combat like next week. Like I'll go fully into it. I have I have act I have a list of actions. I have difficulty values based on range because instead of like like in D and D you have AC or armor class or you make spell saves to like dodge out of the way. It's not like that. It's more so like depending on how far away a target is. That's how difficult it is to shoot something. Which makes sense because it's like, oh, it's a range of something, not necessarily like, like how, uh, like, well, it's how good your skill is, but it's a range, it's a set range difficulty. Um, unless, of course, like I mentioned before last week, you can do, you can dodge bullets with like your bullet time ability. Uh, but yeah, if I have to have a reflex of eight, and then it uses your dexterity uh, plus evasion to dodge out of the way of bullets or melee weapons and stuff. So, yeah. But yeah, other than that, um, I did want to mention that me and Ashley are currently at Dragon Con this weekend. That's why I'm dressed up like this. Uh, we did a post yesterday about it. We'll we'll keep posting more photos and stuff. Uh, if you find us, which might be hard, there's a lot of people here. Um, it's if you find us, <laughs> we are handing out three dice to people who stop who find us and stuff like that. Uh, so feel free to, to find us and we'll give you some dice in multiple colors. Um, but yeah, that's what me and Ashley are, are running around doing. Um, I guess I just want to say thank you to Roll20 for, uh, uh, allowing, uh, just being a great program to, to, like, just, like, host all this and, and, and post like allow us to just kind of like easily like put the maps in from the jumpstart kit 
and like kind of do that. I'm not sure if any uh, anybody else has re- uh, realized, but they have character sheets in there. So each of your characters does have a sheet that you can put in all your stats and stuff into. So Cyberpunk Red has character sheets for this game, which is really cool mm-hmm. in, in Roll20. Um, L- R. Talsorian Games, thank you so much for um, uh, making Cyberpunk. Uh, I think this, this is a really cool system so far, even though we're just starting. Um, if you haven't checked them out before, they are teasing out a new tabletop RPG debuting next year. Um, I don't know the details on it. They've only released like a teaser image and like a little bit of info, but it seems to be kind of doing like an Eastern uh, mythological tabletop RPG, which should be kind of kind of interesting. It doesn't seem cyberpunk at all. It's very kind of like 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 classical Eastern mythology type deal. Uh, at least from my perspective of it. Um, cool. Or you, yeah, you, you so that's coming their, out next year. Their magnum opus yeah. game, Teenagers from Outer Space. That's true. Can't forget Teenagers from Outer Space. Right. Oh. How dare you forget Teenagers from Outer Space? You forget Teenagers from Outer Space, Spencer. Shin, shin, <laughs> shin, 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 shin. But yeah. Uh, thank you to Hero Forge. Um, you, uh, we use you, uh, you to make our characters. That's what's the characters you see and the tokens and stuff like that. That's what you see in our banners. When we make animations, we use Hero Forge characters. Uh, me, uh, a lot of us got to meet uh, what some of the Hero Forge guys uh, at Gen Con. Uh, super cool. Uh, love, love Hero Forge. Love what they do. They do updates every month and they release like more items for your characters. Like, it's it's crazy to see what they've been adding, because I remember when it was just fantasy stuff, and now we're able to make cyberpunk characters just fine, so. Oh, yeah. You can create characters uh, that can ride velociraptors. I learned that this past time. It was fascinating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Last I mean, time I used Hero Forge, they did not have mounts, I don't think, or if they did, they did not have a velociraptor mount. You need to have that if you're going to play an Eberron. Obviously. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> you, you need to be able to everybody put the knows that. on dinosaur mounts required in the lore <laughs> awesome well yeah real that's quick, all i think guys, we, i had to say yeah i just wanted to say uh i just want to make sure that we all give uh, mr spencer here a happy birthday shout out someone Woo! someone had his golden birthday and t- turned 31 uh the other day so on the 31st yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so happy birthday to, to spence Oh, thank you. Ooh, I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great birthday. <laughs> and now I get to celebrate at a con and also play Cyberpunk. So it's a great week overall. Win win. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, I'll return it right back. Thank you to my lovely players uh, Dalton, Dan, Ashley, what? Christian. Oh, no. Dan left. He's Dan's gone. gone. He's out of here. Exactly. They're always back. Oh, oh, I have no idea what happened there. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, uh thank you. Thank you all. Uh love you all. I'm so glad to be doing this and and playing new tabletop RPGs. I have a lot of fun doing this. So, yeah. We love you guys. Please consider liking and subscribing. We are on X, X, it's X now. Um Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and TikTok and YouTube and obviously Twitch. Yes. All right, but yeah, we'll we'll be back next week. Uh continuing the apartment, going into detail about combat and uh yeah, let's see how this play let's see how it plays out with Skull just openly shooting a man in front of his apartment. So. <laughs> hey, look. Desperate times. <laughs> he told me he was going to blow up our this apartment. Is he basically did say that. He said that he was going to. He did to, strongly imply that we to, should leave our apartment. He politely asked you to leave. Everybody in the building and destroy it. He, he just asked you politely to leave. That's all. He just said, you know, you should probably get out of here. Well, I, you know, I, I don't work on him. A skull doesn't work on empty threats, all right? He, he, he doesn't opter, uh, operate on. You know, oh, will this happen? Will that happen? Take it out. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you, guys. Thanks for joining the stream. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Like and subscribe.